Welcome to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Thursday Night Lights, presented by Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. It's the last night of August, but the second week of conference play for the Miami Valley League. And tonight, the Troy Trojans host the Butler Aviators. Good evening. Thank you for spending your Thursday with us. Matt Digby alongside Keith Byers. We'll also hear shortly from Tage Joshi and Keith. Always a difficult league, the Miami Valley League. Both Troy and Butler won their conference openers last week, so a chance to go 2-0 and in this league. That's something that's drawing a lot of motivation for both the Aviators and Trojans. Oh, absolutely. You know, we was out of practice yesterday. Got an opportunity to spend some time with both coaches and, and the team, and they're fired up. It's not too often that, you know, Troy has to go three games into the season before they play a home game. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to the home opener for here, the, the, you know, the Troy Trojans. And so it's going to be an outstanding game today. It is. Troy, again, they were putting up 50 points in both of their first two games at Dunbar and Greenville. But this is their home opener. Butler, meanwhile, wanting to win their second straight after opening NBL play with the win at Piqua. Time now to introduce the third member of our broadcast team, Tej Joshi. Good evening, Tej. Good evening, guys. A beautiful night for football. Feels like that fall crisp weather, even though it is the last day of August. Now, I was speaking with some Troy fans and their cheerleaders. They are super pumped for their first home game of the year. They're riding a winning streak coming into this game. And I chatted with them earlier this morning, earlier tonight, and they were telling me that they are absolutely pumped. Now, of course, on the Butler side, they are ready for some power football. Their shout coach told me to give a shout out to their offensive line. Look out for them going into this game. But for a full check on our forecast ahead of tonight's match. Here's Chief Meteorologist Natalie Walters. Good evening, everyone. Beautiful night for some football temperatures. They're going to be in the 70s through this evening. Just a great day overall. Low humidity, lots of sunshine still too, but it's going to stay nice as that sun continues to set. We'll eventually drop into the upper 60s. Maybe needing a light sweater by late in the evening, but overall great weather is in store for us for Thursday night lights. Thank you, Natalie. Coming up next, the coin toss and the opening kickoff as the Butler Aviators and the Troy Trojans meet on Thursday Night Lights. Welcome back to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Thursday Night Lights, presented by Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. Week three, we are in the Miami Valley League as the Troy Trojans get ready to host the Butler Aviators. Right now you're watching the Toyota Cone coin toss being conducted by referee Todd Bowerman, the Troy captains Devin Strobel and Parker Dickles, who we had a chance to speak with yesterday. You may have seen them on our late evening programs, but Troy won the toss. They deferred. They will be kicking away from the scoreboard. Butler will be receiving, but of note, because of the way the angle is set up in the stadium, Keith Byers, Butler is going towards the sun, and they'll be looking straight into the sun for the first quarter. A little bit of a problem if you're the quarterback, mm -hmm. you know, reading the defense as <laughs> yep. you're looking into the sun. But then on the other side, when you're um, Troy, if you're throwing, your receivers are looking into the sun too. So I'm looking for, for Troy to get their running game started a lot here in the first quarter exactly. while the sun is up high. Exactly. Troy entering this game 2-0 and after dominant performances both offensively and defensively in wins at Dunbar and at Greenville. This is their home opener. Butler, meanwhile, this is their third game under head coach Zach Geith, recently named the new head coach after Ty Cates left for an administrative position at Arcanum. Butler opened the season with a home loss to Northmont while they did rebound to get their first win under Geith last week when they won 27-3 at Piqua. You know, it's always good when you're a first-year coach you know, getting that first W out of your, uh, you know, under your belt, and, and he didn't have to wait long to do it. He got in the second game, you know, as a coach. So, you know, that monkey's off his back. So now they can just worry about, you know, the rest of the season from here on out. And so I'm looking forward to a tremendous, you know, game tonight. I mean, uh, Troy, you know, this is week three for them, and they finally get a home opener, and they, they, they stands are packed here on the Troy sideline. Their fans are, you know, eager to see their two and O team, you know, play at home. Troy in their second year under Troy Everhart as head coach as Cameron Stoltz gets the all clear from Todd Bowerman and the referee crew to line up for this opening kickoff, which is presented by Wright and Schulte. Well, you got to be fired up. You're in high school, Thursday night lights. What's better than playing and getting away? You're hoping if the kick returner wants to get his hands on it right away. And it's going to be Taven Crump taking on one hop. Quickly out to the 20-yard line, close to the 24-yard line before he's taken down. And that is where Butler will begin their opening drive of the night. So some good footwork on the sideline. I thought he almost stepped out of bounds, but he didn't. Time now for Keith's keys to the game, presented by Josh Schmidt Auto Group. Well, Vendaya Butler's getting the ball first, so my thing that I'm looking for for them right away, you know, is to, um, you know, believe they can win the game. 
do they believe they can win the game and they have to win the battle on third down? And Troy, by the way, they got to start fast. They, the home folks are waiting for them to play. So that means on both sides of the ball, they got to start fast and they got to play, you know, win the turnover battle. They win the turnover battle. I think Troy would have no problem winning this game tonight. So out is the Butler offense, Luke Seibert, the starting quarterback under center, the senior, and the first play is a pitch and hit in the backfield by one of the co-captains, number 22, Devin Strobel. That looked to be Donovan Collins on the carry at first as we take a look at the Butler offensive starting lineups presented by Lee's famous recipe chicken. Again, Seibert, the quarterback, he was a magnificent role. He played a significant role, I should say, for the Aviators in their week six win of Thursday Night Lights last year when they beat Stebbins. Bates was on the receiving end of that touchdown pass that you might remember from last year's TNL game against the Indians. And now second down and nine coming up after a short gain. And off up the middle, oh, one nice, broken tackle. tackle. He may have it up for the first down. He does. And across the 30, across the 40-yard line is Caden Bates. That's good for a first down pickup. You know, if you're Vandaya, that's how you want to start the game off. I mean, two plays and a first down already. You know, they want to start fast as well, and they have to play early to set the tone, you know, the first six minutes of the half. And so far, you know, so foot, so good for if you're Vandaya. You know, two plays, two positive plays at that. First down presented by Arby's as Butler is out to the 41-yard line. Cyber continuing to set up under center, looking to his oh, left, going. and oh. the fade just beyond the reach of Austin Flory, the intended receiver. You know, I was down on the field uh, early in the game, and, you know, you got to really be careful, you know, when you, uh, when you throw those fade patterns. You know, on this, on this particular field, I'll explain why. Yeah, here's a look at Detroit defense. It's a 3-4 setup on the front lines with four, actually, you could argue five in the backfield, or defensive backfield for the Trojans, a 3-3-5 setup. Well, you know, Van Dale likes to throw the football. They spread you out like this formation. They got single back in the backfield and cyber, you know, loves to sling it around. So we're going to see a lot of that tonight. On second down, handoff up the middle, Bates, one broken tackle, Caden Bates nearly out to midfield, it's going to set up third and short, but there is a flag on the play, first flag of the night. Flag was thrown, landed at the 40-yard line, uh, just the behind the line of holding and he's walking backwards. <laughs> but I like that, that, that uh, concept that we know Van Dale likes to throw the football. You know, they line up three wides to the wide side of the field, and so they're overloaded to that way, and you know, Troy has to respect that. And then they run up to the weak side and um, have something positive. You got holding on it. Ten-yard penalty, still second down. So instead of third and short, it will end up being second and long, as in the meantime, a Troy student-athlete is being attended uh, to by medical staff. There's a look at Zach Geith, the first-year head coach of the Butler Aviators, and he had quite a season opening, a tenure opening win last week. Not just going to pick one winning, but 27-3, to holding the Indians winning out big. of the end zone. Winning big. I, that bodes well for your defense. Anytime you don't allow them in your end zone, you don't mind giving up points if they're field goals. But uh, that, that's something they're, they're playing with confidence. It's just being at practice yesterday. You know, I can feel that confidence oozing off the players while you watch how they move in the field and have a chance to talk to a few of them. And one of them was pick number 78, uh, Sean Whiteley. Wintley, and uh, he doesn't want to get his phone name called for holding so early. Exactly. <laughs> I told him, uh, high school coach Tom Montgomery told me, the offensive linemen, only two people love them. That's their mothers and the head football coach. <laughs> Everybody else is conditional love. But we love you, Sean. Have a good game. So the ruling, because of the penalty, is second down and 20. And multiple men now in the backfield, and it's a quick handoff to Caden Bates, who is trying to do all he can just to get back to the line of scrimmage, but it's going to set up third and very long. Yeah, I mean, they, they try to catch him off guard by handing the ball to the fullback on the up back and try to have some motion to distract you. But now they got third and forever. Not, you know, the kind of play call you want to call if you're Matt Gee. So third down. And the official ruling, it says they're going to say no gain on the play. So third and 18. 18, it will say as we're coming up now third on. Third and forever. <laughs> so many plays in the book for third and 18. Seibert under center, quickly looking to his right. Quickly finds himself under pressure. Yeah, against the pass off intended for Crump. And a jump ball, very nearly 50-50. Antonio Gonzalez broke that up. 
Taven Crump had an equal shot at it. So did Antonio Gonzalez on defense for the Trojans. And Gonzalez able to get the critical fingertip to prevent the pass completion as here's a look at the replay. You know, he's giving his receiver a chance to come down with it. It's one on one, 50 50 situation. And as an offensive guy, you think you're going to win more of those. And you're a defensive guy, you think you're going to win more. So right now, advantage to the defense in this situation. So Butler. A promising start to their first drive of the night. They did get a first down, did get close to midfield, but couldn't capitalize. The penalty certainly set them back, and they are now in punt formation. It is Julius Rusk, the sophomore, who is back to punt. What a beautiful night for football. It is. Oh. Taking me back to my high school days. Much better weather than we had two weeks ago in senior. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> So Julius Rusk, the punter for Butler. Two men back for Troy. One is number 13, Liam Evilsizer. And he's going to let that ball bounce. So is the second return man, number 30, Caleb Akins. And Troy will take over after this quick break. So no score. We're just over two minutes into week three of Thursday Night Lights. It's the Butler Aviators and the Troy Trojans. Timeout. Welcome back to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Thursday Night Lights presented by Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. Butler and Troy, the matchup for week three. Both teams winning their MVL openers last week and a chance to move to 2-0 and in conference play. In Troy's case, a chance to move to 3-0 and overall. And the Trojans out for their first drive of the ball game. And their starting quarterback, Aiden Kirkpatrick, will be in the shotgun formation. Yeah, one of my keys to the game was will they start fast? They need to start fast, get the crowd involved you know, early and, you know, get them behind. So can they start fast and play disciplined football by not turning, you know, uh, turning the ball over, or, you know, uh, unnecessary penalties? One man in the backfield, Jahari Ward. He got the handoff, nearly broke one tackle right off the bat. That's a nice physical he, run right there. He does get about a six, seven-yard gain as a result, so it will set up second and short. And here are the starting lineup for the Troy Trojan offense. You see Kirkpatrick, the quarterback, Ward with Carson Brown as a fullback, three wide receivers, and then across the line, we had a chance to speak with Parker Nichols, one of the captains yesterday. Uh, Parker was saying they uh, they are also focusing on this game, but also thinking long term of how far this program has come in just their second year under head coach Troy Everhart, making the playoffs, having the first round home game, even though that first round game ended in a loss to Anderson. Now they're ready to take that next step. On second down, a direct snap to Ward, who quickly gets a first down, quickly past midfield. So that will move the chains for Trojans. Two runs for Jahari Ward, and resulting in a first down, the first first down of the game, and it's presented by Arby's. A little disguise of the Wildcat there. <laughs> it was. I saw Jahari Ward play a couple of weeks ago in an opener against Dunbar, mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, he reminds me of me when I was in high school size-wise. <laughs> He's a big, strong, you know, young man. And here are the defensive starting lineups for the Butler defense. They go in a 3-3-5 setup, similar to what you saw a couple minutes ago with the Troy starters. Thor Sittler, the Wasgar, Caleb Cam, they will have the primary chances to bring down Jahari Ward on a handoff. And here is Ward up the middle again, met at the line of scrimmage, and quickly met by number three, Donovan Collins. So a key stop there for the Butler defense. It will force second and long. You know, that was one of my keys to the game, you know, with Butler. Can they win the battle of the third down? Meaning, can they get off the field defensively? Can they stay on the field offensively? So third down is going to be the key, you know, in this game. Even though um, Butler hasn't gotten the third down yet on defense, it's an opening drive. But that's something I'll be watching, you know, all night on both sides of the ball. We do say a tactical substitution. Looks like Ward may be shifting out to the left as a wide receiver. Well, also. Empty backfield. <laughs> Kellen Miller now into the game as an extra receiver as Kirkpatrick on his own back on his side of the field quickly throws to his right it is caught and stopped for a short gain after the catch but on the reception was Jonathan Dillbone and that's going to set up third and short yeah this is our first third down you know for the uh, Butler defense and the Troy offense you know Butler's uh, offense came up short on their first third down attempt let's see how Troy is on their first down, third down because third down is key First, third downs turn into first downs. They turn into touchdowns eventually. And that goes for both sides of the ball. So that uh, Vendaya defense is going to be really tested right now. 
So third and four, line to gain is the Butler 39-yard line. Third and four, a lot better than third and 20. What Butler third was Third and facing. four, you can run the ball as well as pass it. He's Anchor not going to run formation. And him under center and a handoff to Ward. He it's going to be really be close. close. It's going to be one of those left foot, right foot. You know, if the ref marks it with his right left foot, it's a first down. If he marks it with his right foot, it's fourth down. And it was a right foot mark that time. They so we're pause. going fourth down. They will not pause for measurement. And they are quickly getting personnel in to go for a run up the middle. As into the game goes number 43. Well, Hunter Butler's Cephas. defense, they won the third down. Can they win the fourth down? <laughs> That's going to be key also. And the late well, maybe almost trying to call a timeout, but they, they're not going to have to waste it just yet. Caden Zimmer just getting onto the field in time for the play and a pitch to Ward. He's quickly past the 39, past the 35, and that is good enough for the first down pickup. Well, you don't need much time if you're going to just toss the ball to Ward because, you know, he's not going to get tackled for loss too often, and that was fourth in the yard. And wait, why not give it to your big back? That first down pickup presented by Arby's, and the Trojan offense continues. They are now at the Butler's 34-yard line. That's a good physical run. Falling forward, shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. I love it. A little more than halfway through this opening quarter of week three of Thursday Night Lights. Glad you could join us for this MVL contest. First of two we have scheduled in the MVL. As Ward takes the pitch, rolling to his right. Tried to break off one tackle. That was Alan Mapson who first made contact. Ward able to manage a, sh a short gain out of that play, but it's going to bring up second and long. You know, there's a, you know, I saw um, Troy a couple weeks ago, and I was impressed how big they were up yeah. front. They have a big offensive line. Not that Butler's no slouch, but those are big guys who don't get enough credit, you know, in the media. Uh, but they are doing the job right now. And there, you notice uh, the last couple of plays, Ward running to his right. The right tackle listed as Parker Dickles, the offensive tackle. He is the weekly Jeff Schmidt Auto Group Scholar Athlete of the Week. You'll be hearing more about him at halftime. As Kirkpatrick, this time a rare First keeper, guy open. And he's quickly finding himself in trouble. Multiple flags on the play, but the pass is complete. And it's in for the touchdown flag pending. A little laundry on the field. Dakota Manson on the reception, but we'll check for the penalty. There could be a variety of things. Illegal man downfield, uh, holding, but I'll wait for the for the uh, white hat referee to give us the call. Well, judging from the Troy crowd reaction. You know, right, they, they, didn't were, to, they didn't want to accelerate too early. They, did they? they were appreciative <laughs> of the effort, but it was kind of like they know something that the players in the moment might not know, or if, if they weren't paying attention, they might not know. So we had one holding penalty on Butler's opening drive that stunted what up to that point was a promising drive for the aviator offense now troy put in a similar situation okay i gotta be fair i gotta mention the offense alignment who who held that was jacob estes you know your name is getting called on thursday night light so you got a chance to make it up too see we don't talk about the offense alignment because they don't get to score touchdowns they only block for touchdowns so he's gonna be fine i don't want to only mention this game because something bad happened but you got a lot of football to play so jacob we're behind you Second down and 18 from the 42. Kirkpatrick with an empty backfield looking to his left. Receiver fell down. But and another throw across the middle. Oh, my gosh. By Manson. He wrestles the ball away. And that sets up a Troy first down just outside the 20. Hey, that was a tremendous play. I mean, that was a 50 50 ball. That, that was the absolute textbook <laughs> definition of a 50 50 <laughs> ball. They both had hands on it. And Manson uh, came up with it. Kirkpatrick scrambling to his left, and that was very nearly a pickoff for Joey Love, the defensive back. He looked to have had first dips on it, and it almost looked from our angle like Manson it literally was, wrestled the ball away. It, well, it kind of did. Yeah, they both got there at the same time. It's just one of those deals. That first down presented by Arby's, and Troy just outside the red zone, and Manson on the end around will be stopped for a slight loss, which will bring up second and maybe 11. As we're now under four minutes to go in the first quarter. I see a big ward just to check back in the game. You got a, a good running back like that. You don't really go too long without calling his number. And when too long, I mean, you don't really call two or three plays without giving it to him. So he hadn't touched the ball the last two plays for uh, 
Troy, so I'm expecting him to, get, to touch the ball, be somewhere around it on this play. Kellen Miller also was checked back into the game, and he is the lone man out as a wide receiver on this formation for the Troy offense. As Ward takes the pitch to his right, able to get by one man, but there is a flag in the backfield. So a gain of close to five or six yards, but the flag is pending. Yeah, that's an early flag. When you see a flag that quickly, unless the defense jumped offside, you know more than nine times out of ten is going to be on offense. Todd Bowerman, the referee tonight, and his crew. They've been letting the teams play so far, but we'll see what. The... Second holding call of this drive, and that's going to set Troy back past the Butler 30. Mm. You know, you take a one step forward, two steps back, that's not good. Mm -mm. You know, you got two plays, that, you know, to pick up 21 yards. Let's see if they can get at least a, a half or a third of it back to try to make third down much more manageable. So the ruling as a result of the play, it's now second down and 21, ball of the 32. Troy trying to get a first down at the Butler 11. Kirkpatrick oh boy. over the middle, and it's intercepted by Butler. The Aviator defense comes up with a stand, and they will take over with outstanding field position thanks to the interception by number four, Sam Mitchell. We talked with him yesterday. Sam Mitchell was fired up about the game, yep. and he comes up with the first turnover of the evening. So the Butler Aviator defense, they bend but do not break. It is scoreless after one drive each on week three of Thursday Night Lights. Three minutes, one second to play in the opening quarter of Butler at Troy on Thursday Night Lights on My TV Dayton. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Taze Joshi, and our crew greeting you from Troy Memorial Stadium, the very immaculate all-grass surface. Old happen. school. Although we have been told turf is coming in the near future, but the grass does look very much up to par as Butler's first play of their second drive of the game. It's a handoff to Caden Bates, who does all he can to get back to the line of scrimmage, but is met by multiple Troy defenders. You know, talking to the Vandalia Butler's coach yesterday, you know, we were talking about, you know, defensive play, and he was really impressed with his defense, you know, the first two weeks of the season. And, you know, to, to get a turnover, you know, on the opening drive, mm -hmm. you know, it's got to make him feel good about that as well. And especially when you consider how well that drive was going from Troy's standpoint. They had had an opportunity to score a touchdown that was called back for holding. To him. But a quick pass <laughs> on the screen, and that is complete for several yards. Number 32 on the reception for Butler. That Aaron is Aaron Turner. Turner, the running back. So a swing pass out of the backfield. It was set up third and... A little less than five. You know, you roll him to your left as a right-handed quarterback. It's not always the easiest thing to do. He had to get, you know, get your feet square. You know, ideally he would like to throw the ball to him a little quicker. But I'd rather him take a, a couple of extra steps to get his feet right to be able to complete the pass. And, you know, he was able to do that. We spoke to Cybert last night. He said he was more comfortable as a pocket passer than as a mobile scrambling quarterback. But here's Austin Flory taking the handoff, and he will do all he can just to prevent a loss on the play. But the Troy defense was not fooled. It's going to set up fourth down, and that, I believe that is our first three and out for That's, either team that we've seen today. The cyber is over there looking like he doesn't want to come off the field. Like, are they thinking about going for it? Or they're just disguising before they throw the punt team out there. Well, we already saw the Troy defense go for it on fourth down. They picked it up with a Jahari Ward carry, but that was fourth and one. This was fourth and four. A, yeah, in minus territory, so you know, I think you want to just eat a little clock and play the battle of the field position, try to pin them inside the 20 or possibly the 15-yard line. So Russ gone to pump for his second time for Butler, nice and punt. that is a very nice punt. That we'll will take a pro-Butler bounce. One too many, in fact. It will roll into the end zone for a touchback as we're now under 50 seconds to play in the quarter. I mean, that was an excellent punt. I it mean, was. It, it would have liked to have a little bit more air on it, but uh, it had a chance to keep him, you know, to pin him down inside the 10 or 5-yard line, ball rolling to the end zone. But still, you make Troy's offense go 80, you know, as opposed to going for it on fourth down and not getting it and putting him in plus territory. So you gotta, you know, got to be patient and just try to, you know, to win the field position battle. 
Let's throw it right down now to our sideline reporter, Tej Joshi. Hi, Tej. Hey, guys, just wanted to let you know, we talked about it during the pregame, that the crowd here in Troy is pumped for tonight's game. I mean, just look at this student section roar right now. This is a huge crowd, especially for a Thursday night. The cheerleaders are coming before their game. They are so pumped to finally have a home game this season, and they're excited for their team. Just lots of festivities, lots of fanfare, and wait till they score a touchdown here, because they're going to be doing lots of fun with the flags and throwing footballs to the crowd. So we're going to toss it back up to you in the control room or the studio as this like we have a big play. Anderson Brown quickly down the sideline. There is a flag back at the 19, but touchdown pending the flag. Carson Brown per the end around, but we still wait for the call from Todd Bowerman. It looks like we're going to get a holding. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news too for the Troy fans are sitting at home watching it, but it was a well blocked play, just not a perfectly blocked play. Well, that's the second second drive for Troy, and that's now the second time they've had a touchdown called back because of holding. It was a pass from Kirkpatrick to Dakota Manson on the first drive, and now instead of celebrating six points, a chance to add a seventh, it's now going to be second down and long as a result. All right, right now, Troy has to calm down. That was one of my keys to the game. Play disciplined football, meaning, you know, no turnovers, you know, limit your penalties. Because nobody's going to play a perfect game, but you got to limit your penalties you got to get back to your team discipline. And I think they're pressing right now. They want every play to be a big play. And so guys are doing a little too much instead of just doing uh, what you just do your job first and don't try to overdo your job. And by you got a good block, just be careful with it. And then, you know, you get to holding the guy after too long. And it's right in front of the referee, so he's going to make that call. Just over 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Because of the spot, it's now first and 20 for Troy from their own 10. Ward on the left hip of Kirkpatrick from the shotgun. Ward takes the handoff and broke one tackle right at the line of scrimmage, but maybe got two, two and a half. But it will still be second and long. Yeah, the Troy playbook get real short for, you know, second and uh, 18. And for Troy, and you think maybe run, let the clock run out. We're now about 15 seconds to go. Yeah, possibly just get a reset. You know, go 0-0 zero, zero after the first quarter and say hey, it's a lot of football still to play and, you know, figure out how we're going to get this first down in the next two next two plays. So those score in the opening 12 minutes, but both teams have had opportunities. Troy with two touchdowns that have been called back for holding penalties, and we are scoreless heading to the second quarter. Timeout. Welcome back to Lee's Famous Recipe Thursday Night Lights, presented by Cincinnati Area Toyota Dealers. Scoreless between Butler and Troy as we get ready to start the second quarter. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Taze Joshi, and our crew, thank you for making us part of your Thursday evening. As on second and long for the Troy offense, it's a QB keeper. Kirkpatrick was able to get a couple yards on the play, but it's still going to set up third and very long for the Trojan offense. Yeah, man, they had a reset after the, after the quarter just ended, but, you know, you're coming out to start the second quarter, you know, second and uh, about 20. Now you got third and 18. You know, you just don't want to do anything, you know, no bad penalties and just take care of the football. You don't have to throw the ball 18 yards, or, you know, to get a first down. You know, just run your normal patterns. Guy, you know, it's got to be a pass nine times out of ten. You catch it, guy breaks tackle, you still get a first down here. And if you're Butler, you just want to get off the field. Kirkpatrick will hand off to Jahari Ward, who was met almost instantly in the backfield. That's going to be a loss back to the 10-yard line. So Troy will have to pump for the first time after two promising drives. One ended in an interception. The other will end in the punt, but both, again, had touchdowns called back for holding penalties. Yes, I, I mean, you know, they haven't played a, a clean drive yet, meaning an error-free drive without any penalties or turnovers. Uh, so most of their, their problems are self-inflicted right now, but Butler's taking advantage of it. They're doing what they're doing as well. And they'll you know, have, their defense playing solid. They'll have a great opportunity with Taven Crump already back in punt return formation. He's at midfield. And Troy's punter is number 16, it looks like, Cameron Stoltz. He's uh, was about two yards back in his end zone, but got a great hop. And Crump's going to let this one roll. An outstanding punt when all is said and done. It's going to be downed at the Butler 39-yard line. So now Butler takes over. And first quarter, they were staring into the sun. Also with the help of shadows, now they'll be going away from the sun when we come back. No score, just over a minute and a half into the second quarter of Thursday Night Lights. 
Well, every time you go to a high school football game, there always seems to be a theme night for the visiting fans, one for the home fans. Right now, you're looking at the Butler High School student section. They are going with the neon vest look tonight. The neon <laughs> construction vest workers. Theme. Yeah, construction workers. So very big massive props to the Butler students on their creativity. As the Aviators get set for their third drive of the night, this is Donovan Collins. He's able to maneuver his way into about a two-yard gain. I like how Donovan Collins plays. He plays, you know, runs hard, and the first guy hardly gets him on the ground. It's kind of slippery. You know, he breaks tackles. So it's going to set up second and about eight on the play. 41-yard line of Butler. They got close to midfield on their first drive, but a holding penalty stunted their progress across the field. And their second drive resulted in a three and out. Cyber under center on second down with one man in the backfield. And that player gets the carry. Rebel Hayden quickly met at the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third down and long. They try to hit him with a quick hitter there, because if he breaks that first wave, you know, he's got some yards to run through. It reminded me of a no game you play as a kid, Red Rover, Red yes. Rover. Yep. If you, know, you run through those arm tackles, you know, you got a chance for a big play, but you got to give Troy's uh, defense credit. You know, they made a stop and didn't let him, uh, you know, break that tackle. So third down and eight coming up for the Butler offense. They can get a first down at their own 49-yard line after a great punt from Troy's Cameron Stoltz. Clock now under nine minutes to go to halftime. Cyber with time. Good block by the game. running back. Pick up the blitzer. But he quickly runs out of time. He does manage a short gain out of the play, but not nearly what he was looking for. You know, sometimes the best decision is no decision, and Cyber, you know, showed his maturity there. You know, as a quarterback, he could have just threw that ball up and hoped for the best. Sometimes you eat it, play field position. You know, it's not there. Get what you can get. And uh, your defense is playing well. You know, shut him out in the first quarter. You know, play the field position game. So Julius Rusk is back to punt for the Butler Aviators and the two men back deep for Troy. One is Caleb Akins, the other is Liam Ebelsizer. And this kick end over end, quickly downed at the 36 yard line by Sam Mitchell. Got a Troy bounce that time. <laughs> So no score with just over eight minutes to go until halftime. You're watching Thursday Night Lights on my TV date. Welcome back to Troy Memorial Stadium, week three of Thursday Night Lights. No score between the Butler Aviators and the Troy Trojans. A reminder, you can watch this game not just on my TV Dayton, but also on the Dayton 24-7 Now Facebook page and on our website, Dayton247Now.com. Troy back out for their third drive of the evening. And Aiden Kirkpatrick winds up in the backfield and quickly another flag on the play. And it looks like we may be yeah. a false start on the Trojan offense. You know, I was just about to say I'm really looking forward to this drive out of Troy. You know, they got good field position. The first quarter is in the, is in the rearview mirror. They seem to be pressing to me. They're trying to be perfect instead of just relaxing and having fun and playing football. You know, Thursday night lights and everybody's angel. We want everybody, every play to be a big play. And you can't play that way. You just got to let it happen naturally. It's like the home run hitter swinging for the fences. Yes. You know, you just, be, just get the ball in play. You know, one play at a time, and then before you know it, the big players show up. So instead of first and 10, it's first and 15 now from their own 31-yard line. Came That's right back Patrick to the same play. He liked it was there. Dakota Manson, who waited for a small opening, and he got to about the 35-yard line, so he'll bring up second down and 11. And the other thing... From a Troy standpoint, look at how they performed their first two games. 50-plus points at Dunbar, 50-plus points last week at Greenville. So, Bob averages around now, you, uh, Troy will feel they have a couple points. Yeah, you know, they got off to a slow start against Dunbar, too. I know the final score wasn't indicative of that, but, okay. you know, they it was like they was revving the engine up in the first quarter, quarter and a half, and then it just went all downhill, you know, from the end of the first half into the second half. So it's all about patience and waiting for the opportunities that will come to those who are patient. On second down, Kirkpatrick quickly forced to his right. Got a block from Ward. He'll get out past the 40-yard line. So that will set up third and a little bit more manageable than 10. Third and very manageable now. Now your playbook is still wide open. 
We have injured a uh, Butler Aviator on the field. Well, here's a look at the play. Kirkpatrick, he wanted to throw it first, quickly realized that wasn't going to be an option. And he was able to get out of bounds after a short gain. As there's a look at the Troy stands. So this is week three of Thursday Night Lights, our first all-conference matchup. The Miami Valley League being featured tonight. We do have one more MVL matchup on our schedule. That will be in week nine when Tippecanoe visits Stebbins. And if you wanted to interact with us, follow us on X at the handle at Dayton247now and also use the hashtag Thursday Night Lights. Again, if you're not able to watch on my TV, Dayton, this game also streaming live on Facebook, our Dayton 24-7 Now Facebook page, and on our website, Dayton247Now.com. There's a look at Troy Trojans head coach, Troy Everhart, in his second season. Last year, the Trojans going 7-3 and three in the regular season. They were the seventh seed in Division II Region 8. Had a first-round home game against Anderson, though Anderson did go on to win that game. Anderson, I believe, ended up reaching the regional final in Region 8. Not bad. You know what I love about Troy? Yeah. The colors. Scarlet and, and gray. Red, uh, scarlet, and scarlet, gray. scarlet and gray. <laughs> <laughs> of course, only a few more days till the opener. Let's say we're getting closer and closer. We're less than 48 hours away. We're talking about the Buckeyes, of course. We're not talking about the Indiana Hoosiers. Yes. We're talking uh, about absolutely. the Buckeyes. <laughs> Just in case anyone needed clarification. Just in case. Yeah. Well, we can report that the injured aviator was able to walk with some assistance to the sideline, so we're ready to resume play. It Crucial is... bird down here. Can Butler get off the field? Can Troy stay on the field? Third and six. Line to gain for Troy is their own 46-yard line. Ward on the left hip of Kirkpatrick, and Ward with the handoff. Quickly got by one man, but did not get by that a second. That was an excellent tackle. Number but nine on the play for Butler. That's Braylon Crump. Excellent tackle. One one stepped up, met him in the hole. That's not easy. And That's now, not easy. Troy having a decision you know. to make now. They've already gone for it on fourth down and won and converted that successfully. But that was also on the plus side of the field. Right now they're in the fourth and three on their side of the field. And I think they're still going to go for it, though. Cameron Stoltz is in just in case. Yeah, just in case, you know, uh, Butler's not ready. They jump off sides, and that would be an easy first down for for Troy. Cameron Stoltz in the pump for Troy. One man back for Butler is Austin Flory, the senior. Oh, they, and they do try oh, a short snap. Whoa. What a flag on the play. Oh, because everybody's not going to like that. They tried the short snap to the captain, it number 22, was there. Devin Strobel, and he looked like he would have had enough of a hold to get, gain the first down. Yeah, that was a self-inflicted wound again. They have had chances, Detroit Trojans, throughout this first half. Yeah, when well, they decide to go for the fake punt, it's right about fake punt area. You know, you alluded to it before the play. You said, hey, maybe they're going to go for it, and they were going for it a different, just unconventional. They were. Just not out of their regular offense. So I believe Butler will be ready for the rest of the game for a fake. And Butler, in fact, has switched out their return man. It was Flory. Now it's Taven Crump. We went right back 11. to it. And they went and it's back still to there. Strobel, who got the direct snap and quickly into Butler territory and inside the 40-yard line. So if you don't succeed, try again. They fooled me even. Fourth and eight was a gamble, but the gamble pays off. And that's a first down for the Trojan offense. A first down presented by Bathmaster. You know, they like what they saw, you know, the first time they lined up in the punt formation. And they just overloaded them. Just have them overloaded. Again, that Good first, call. Again, that first down presented by Bathmasters as... Troy quickly moves from by their own 39-yard line now to the Butler 38-yard line. Let's see if they can capitalize on this momentum. You know, I always talk about momentum. Yes. It's going to be on one sideline. You just want him on your sideline. And all Mo wants to do is ride. So can Troy delay a game again? They got the timeout just before it was delay a game. 
Especially given how the first drive went for the Trojans. Very promising, but it ended in a turnover just outside the red zone as Troy Everhart and his staff just need to get some things clarified for the Trojan offense. As you can be sure to follow us on Facebook, the handle at Dayton247 now. And use the hashtag Thursday Night Lights. Be sure to reach out to us from wherever you're watching the game. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Taze Joshi. We have a... Very exciting and spirited it game is. so far in the opening couple of minutes. Even without the points, it's still uh, been back and well, forth. Well, when you, when you, uh, both teams are running the ball, mm -hmm. that's eating up clock. Yes. And, you know, they're playing college and pro rows. They've got 12 minute quarters instead of 15 minutes. So that clock runs a lot faster. That shortens the game. It does. So each time you get the ball, you have to make the most out of your series. You can't take it off thinking you're going to get extra amount of attempts at the bites at the apple. So this is a crucial drive. You know, with five minutes and 19 seconds, you're going to have. So first down after the fake punt that worked successfully. It's a handoff to Ward, who manages to get maybe a yard and a half out of the play, but it will be second down and a little more than eight yards to go. That was a nice tackle by uh, Donovan Collins, the linebacker. You're not going to get Ward down high too often without, you know, somebody on his legs, but that time he was able to accomplish that feat. Under five minutes to go now until halftime. Again, Troy, you could say they've come the closest to scoring. They were just outside the Butler red zone on their first drive before an interception ended that opening drive. As on second down, Ward quickly up the middle, nearly broke a tackle. As it is, he will be very close to a first down. And they may or may not call the measurement, though they're going to say he's about a yard short. So third down and one from the 28, 29 yard line. 28 yard line is the line to gain. You know, if I'm Troy, I think we have got to get the points on the board on this drive right here. And my points, I mean touchdown. <laughs> yeah. So I settled for a field goal, but I want a touchdown. Especially considering the opportunity, the fact that Troy did defer the opening coin toss, they kicked away to start the game. So they'll be getting the ball first in the second half. Ward on third down off the right tackle and spins forward oh. for a couple extra yards to the 24. There is a first down, but there is a flag that, that came after flag. the play. So we'll see what like the ruling mask. is. Troy Everhart several yards onto the field already. Making clear where he feels the penalty is due. Play looked to be dead and then the flag was thrown from my angle. Yes, mine, mine too. I thought I saw the referee signal something to his face. Personal foul, face mask, yes. So Todd Bowerman announcing that Troy will add a couple more yards to that run. That was enough alone for a first down pickup by Bathmasters, but the placement of the ball because of the penalty, that's actually going to move them inside the Donato's delivery zone for the first time tonight. Donato's a great call for after the game. Either call in or order online at Donato's.com. Every piece is important. We get on the referees. I know I do, but that was an excellent call. Yeah. That was face mask right there at the end. Easy to miss, but he didn't miss it that time. First and 10 from the 13, and another flag on the play pre-snap. That's against uh, Butler. They think they line up in the neutral zone. Encroachment. Yep. And that's going to make a first and ten situation now first and five. As again, because of the placement of the penalty, that has moved the Troy Trojan offense for the first time this evening into the Donato's delivery zone. Donato's a great call for after the game. Every piece is important. You know, you hate defensive penalties. And when I played in New England, uh, I played for Bill Parcells, and Bill Belichick was a defense coordinator. And I would hear those guys harping about defensive penalties. Well, Butler now is calling their first time out of the half, and it comes with three minutes, 39 seconds to go as Troy knocking on the door, and it's one of those situations, Keith. Troy has had their opportunities. They've had chances, but uh, if but for a couple mistakes on their end, what's the mindset now in terms of making sure you've taken care of those mistakes, you've corrected what needed to be corrected so that this drive ends in points? Well, I mean, you, you want to finish the half off strong. You want to start the half strong and finish it strong. And of course, you want a lot going on in the middle of that half. But the halftime speech uh, from the coach is going to be a little bit different if they end this with a touchdown. 
if they end this, you know, with a turnover or don't get any points on the board, uh, I don't think uh, Trigger is going to be real happy. Well, especially looking from the Butler perspective, if you give up a touchdown, depending on when you give it, if you give it up, when it occurs, you want to have time for yourself to go down the field to get a touchdown yourself because, again, Troy will be getting the ball first to start the second half. Yeah, it's half. almost like old school basketball, make it, take it. <laughs> you know, you score a touchdown at the end of the half before you get it coming out the second half. But they want to fit. There's still a lot of time to play in this half, three minutes and 39 seconds. You know, and I've been impressed all night long with uh, Vendaya's defense. So, you know, they've already had one turnover. You're on defense. You said, let's turn them over again. And you're Troy. Let's punch the thing in the end zone. First and five from the seven. Kirkpatrick with a handoff up the middle. Met right at the line of scrimmage was Jahari Ward as the run up the middle was a play that did not fool the Butler defense. So that brings up second down. And a big test here for Zach Keith's defense. Can they hold the Trojans three plays and make them uh, have to settle for a field goal? Or can they do it four straight plays and force a turnover on downs? What do you think? you think it's four down territory? You know, three, th I think over if three minutes, if it's fourth, just over three minutes to go, I'd say four down territory. Yeah, if it's fourth and less than two, I think uh, Troy goes for it. They went for it in fourth and eight. They have. <laughs> so. they, they did. <laughs> On this drive, it was the fake punt, perfect direct snap to Devin uh, they gotta get that. They wait. They're going to call timeout. And they will they, get they're the timeout They're about to get delay a game, and you don't want to get that on. They still got a timeout to go, so. And they've already had a delay of game penalty. I believe it was this drive earlier in the second quarter. Yeah, so Coach Everhart won't be happy that he had to blow and waste another time out there. But he'll get over that if it ends in a touchdown. He wants to be, make sure you get the right call play. You don't want to rush it with uh, two minutes, 33 seconds to go in the half. You got second and go with second, and you still get a first down. You know, second and five. Well, be sure to stick with us coming up at the end of the first half. Tej Joshi will have the halftime show. He'll be talking with... Members from both the Troy High School and Butler High School communities. And Tej is right now prowling the sidelines. As you see a look at the Troy section. The student section will be coming into view just off to the right of your screen right now. Troy students decked out in red and black or scarlet and gray. Yeah, I see scarlet and <laughs> yep. gray. With splash of black. <laughs> yes, yeah. The, the helmets are definitely gray. That, that, there you is, go. that is indisputable. It's the Buckeye in I'm just sorry. That was born there. Yep. Second down and five from the seven. Kirkpatrick with two men on the left side in the backfield. And Kirkpatrick quickly gave it to Jahari Ward, who was met back at the 10. That's going to be a loss and bring up third and long as the Butler defense again. They're standing firm. Yeah, They're making yeah. plays when they need to be made. That was number 25. I mean, on you're stop, a defensive player. You want to play on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, you're an offensive player. You want to play on the defensive side of the ball. So that was an excellent blitz by, by Butler. They put pressure, penetration. They're not, they're not playing read and react. They're going to seek and destroy on defense. Loss of five on the play means third down and 10 from the 12. Troy can get a first down at the two. You don't have to get the touchdown right away this play, but we're going to have another stoppage. Yeah, I think this time Vendaya wants to take a look at it. Oh, this is an excellent timeout. You know, it's third and, third and long, third and ten. You don't want to give up any cheap, being cheap. You've had a good first half, you know, defensively. So, you know, make sure you're in the defense, you know, that you won't call. Don't rush it. Make sure, you know, you're comfortable with, the, you know, your defensive call. I'm sure uh, Troy's going to probably stay with what they had called. They like it, you know, and uh, let the better team win. And especially a good news from currently Troy's perspective, the direction they're going left to right across your screen, they're not looking into the sun anymore. The shadows have. It's below the trees now. The sun has dipped below the trees here at Troy Memorial Stadium, so neither team looking directly into the sun should be that way for the rest of the night on. A beautiful night. We had the rain night. two weeks ago at Xenia. And then the heat. The heat and muckiness of last week. And now we're back. Ideal conditions for this final night of August 2023. I'm looking forward to this play. 2.11 to go until halftime. Third down and 10 from the 12. Again, Troy can get a first down at the 2. Kirkpatrick on the keeper off the right side. And he was not able to escape. The tackle of Braylon Crump, number nine. So now big decision time for the Trojans. And Cameron Stoltz is running onto the field as if they are going to settle for a field goal. 
Yeah, you don't want to come up totally empty handed on this drive. You had a good drive. You've driven it down here, you know, inside the 20. You don't want to turn the ball over, so you're going to give, you give your kicker a chance, you know, to, uh, to put some points on the board. That way you go into the uh, halftime with, you know, three is better than zero. Liam Evelsizer of the holder. Cameron Stoltz will attempt a 29 yard field goal from the right hash after this timeout. The referee signaling another stoppage of play. So Butler calls their final timeout. Troy still has one of their own with one minute, 29 seconds to go until halftime. As there's Zach Geith, the first year head coach, again, coming off his first win as a head coach of the Aviators last week at Piqua. They held the Indians to just a field goal. And after the success, the historical success, the history associated with the name Piqua to go to Alexander Stadium and win 27-3 for your first head coaching win. That's a big, and now they have to follow that up against a quality Troy team that's 2-0. Yeah, you know, talking to Coach Zach yesterday, you, you could tell how much he loves his program. He's been around, I think it was 11 years. Yep. Been around a long time. Finally the head coach, and that gets to be infectious. You know, it, it leadership starts at the top, and, and I think the players are, you know, buying in, just watching how they was moving around in practice, talking to the players. So I think, you know, it's a new new, new era, you know, in Vendale and Butler football. Coming off a 3-7 and seven season in the tutelage of Ty Cates back in 2022, but then Cates resigned. He took an administrative position at Arcanum High School. Or with our Cannon schools, I should clarify. Are you saying alert fake right now on fourth down? You they never fake know. Punt. Will they fake a field goal? You never know. Maybe that's why he called timeout. 29-yard attempt for Stoltz is on the way. It is up, and it is no good. Off to the right, not on target. And again, the Butler defense holding firm and keeping the Troy offense We've from got a ball game, the folks. score <laughs> of the contest. You know, both defenses play well. You got to give Butler credit. I mean, they put pressure on the kick right there. I couldn't tell if he got a piece of it. It happened real quick. The hold looked good. The snap looked good. And it did look like it was curling, just not enough in time. Yeah. Because they were on the right hash from 29 yards. Yeah, I mean, the ball was in the middle of the field on third down. They were the quarterback run. It took it to that hash. And, you know, high school hashes, you know, are a lot wider than NFL yes. hashes are. I have to say this. We had Butler on our Thursday Night Lights schedule last year. They were playing Stebbins. That game finishing 10-7 with all the scoring in the fourth quarter of that game. And Seibert, the quarterback who was in that game, had a handoff and a results in a short gain. Stop made for Troy by number 19, or number 14, Nathan Wyatt. There's Seibert who had a touchdown pass to Caden Bates in the fourth quarter of that game against Stebbins. It ended on a walk-off field goal to win 10-7. That was wow. a game... That was at, originally going to be at Stebbins, but because of power issues to the Stebbins field that were noticed the day before the game, they made the call about 24 hours before kickoff to move the game to Butler. So that was an eventful week leading up to the game. Does Stebbins still wear their home jerseys? Yes, Stebbins did <laughs> still wear their home jersey, jerseys. Yes, it was their homecoming. On second down, a handoff up the middle again. That's going to result in a short gain and bring up third and long. Yeah, I'm not interested if, they, if Troy's going to call timeout here to make them punt on fourth down if they don't get it. Again, Troy will get the ball to start the second half because they deferred at the opening coin toss. And there is right now. Yeah, they don't have to run a, a play. Yeah, Butler does not have to run another play if they don't want to. And I think that's exactly what Seibert may be doing. Zach Geith is saying the defense has played great. The offense no, we'll work on what needs to be corrected in the halftime talk. You know, I don't like to second-guess coaches, but I would have called a timeout if I'm sure because I will see your punt. You know, it could be a bad snap. It could be a whole lot of a lot of things. You could be turned the punt for a touchdown. But that's just me. <laughs> so that will bring an end to the first half of week three of Thursday Night Lights and no score between Butler and Troy. The Trojans with an opportunity. They've had two touchdowns called back because of holding penalties. And then you just saw a few minutes ago the 29-yard field goal attempt from Cameron Stoltz was wide to the right. Butler has had opportunities themselves, but they haven't necessarily been able to capitalize as much as they would have liked to themselves. So now it's a chance for Zach Geith and Troy Everhart to talk to their respective teams and figure out how to fix 
whatever went wrong in the first half because there were some things that did go right in the first half especially from Troy's perspective oh yeah I mean they, they crossed the goal line twice in the first half just unfortunately you know they had penalties to bring them back so it's a reset for both teams 0-0 zero, zero, you know at the half and I should say that no matter what the score was in the game Tej Joshi is now with Troy head coach Troy Everhart Tej I'll be back at half the coaches have to walk into the locker room we'll toss it back to you guys all right, thank you, Tej. So we will be back for the halftime show after this quick break. Go score at halftime between Butler and Troy on Thursday Night Lights. The score here is 0-0 at halftime, of course. Lots of fun here at the stadium. We're chatting with the principal right here at Troy High School. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Thank you. Of course, we have a lot to talk about because it's a busy year for you guys already academically, athletically, and busy for the football season already. Just from your perspective, I mean, you guys are too low to start the season heading into tonight. I mean, a lot of energy around the team, right? Yeah, for sure. So the kids are super excited. We just, we are very thankful to have such a big head start to the year, but we know that... Every week, it's a new week, and so I think we're really excited for Butler this week, knowing what they've done already, too. Now, talk to me about the students and the student body at large, not just the players, but everybody. What's the energy been like at school this week? So we've had a fantastic start to the year this year. So our students, number one, they're just so involved. So not only do we have our football team, our marching band, our cheerleaders here, but our students, one of the things we push is to get involved, get plugged in. So. All the clubs, activities, they've had a huge start this year, too. So our students not only work hard in the classroom, but they're involved everywhere outside of school. So you can see how big our student section is tonight. We're excited to be here and just support our school. Now, of course, we're all excited about the football team. That's what we're all watching right now. But I want to make sure we take a second to talk about all the other fall sports as well. Is there anyone else you want to make sure we highlight or just say that we're paying special attention to? Honestly, I, I don't feel like we have any one special team. Our our student athletes, I was just at, for example, I was just at our boys' soccer game this week, right? Play tip. It's a big rivalry there, too. But our student section was huge. We took up two big sections in the stands. And then for the following night, the girls flipped that script. Everybody came to the girls' game, too. So our students just, our big red rumble is our student section. They go everywhere. They travel to our volleyball games. They're, they're everywhere. So we just support all the students. Just wanted to chat a little bit about academics for a second. You're, of course, the principal. Yeah. So got to chat a little bit about that there. What is important for you about the saying of student athletes? We had the word student right there mm -hmm. first. Maybe you can just put a little bit of your perspective on that. Sure. So one of the things we pride ourselves at Troy High School is our rigor. So our students work really hard. They have very high expectations in the classroom. But last year, every single sport across winter, fall, and spring, every single athlete had a 3.0 or higher last year. We really celebrated them. They work hard. We have like I said, really high expectations for them, and they meet them. They meet them and beat them every year. So, What is one little thing about Troy High School that maybe an outsider doesn't know that we should know? We're the Trojan family. So it's one of the biggest things that we talk about. Trojan family is everything to us. So we, we really pride ourselves that every person that walks into our building, every community member that supports us, we are part of the Trojan family, and we really, really, like that's the one thing that we know when you come out of Troy High School, you will always be a member of our Trojan family. Well, it was absolutely a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for your insight about the academics here, the athletics. We really appreciate everything. Thank you. Go Trojans. Of course. Remember, it is 0-0 here. We're going to a quick commercial break. The Halftime Report is sponsored by Wright and Schulte. score here at halftime and of course we are now chatting with the superintendent of the Vandalia Butler City Schools our friend Rob O'Leary good to be chatting with you again we talked was it it was last year last year yeah uh September actually it was my birthday uh was our Thursday night light so I definitely remember we were actually at your stadium and I remember a bunch of your students there were singing to you they, they did they sang me happy birthday so uh, we have no singing tonight but we have a lot of other important stuff to talk Absolutely. about the score right now is 0-0 and football is important to both 
public schools here, but so are academics and all the other athletics as well. Maybe you can just give me a little bit of perspective for you guys in your entire district about that. Well, sure. Well, uh, first, we just want to say thank you and appreciate uh, everything you guys do to, to really put a great night on for our student athletes, uh, give them a chance to, to have that uh, professional feel, a college feel. Um, so I know we always look forward to these nights. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, we just started off a, a great school year. We're about two and a half weeks in with our students, about three full weeks in with our staff. Uh, really, our, our fo goal and, and focus right now is just to uh, to build off the great successes we've had over the last three years. Um, you know, we've had uh, about $30 million total in scholarships awarded to our senior graduating senior classes over the last three years. That is really incredible, is. a really high amount. Let's just talk a little bit more about athletics in detail here sure. for a second. I mean, first of all, you said such success over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. We all know about football. Let's talk about the other sports for a second. Sure. Uh, they don't always get as much attention, even from the media, like folks like us. But let's highlight them right now. Who else should we be talking about? Well, all of our teams right now in the fall have started off uh, really successfully. Um, Last school year, we had a lot of success as well um, with many state and individual awards. Our girls' bowling team finished, in, I think, 11th in the state and the uh, 12th nationally. Um, so had a national ranking, which was awesome, and uh, returned a lot of the, the girls from that team. Um, so our, our girls' basketball program has had a lot of success over the last several years. Our wrestling program, our girls' and boys' soccer's. Uh, programs this year are, are really starting off strong. So we're excited about that. And of course, our baseball team is, is always very, very successful. Success around everywhere. I want to make sure we talk about your students for a second because the Vandalia Butler School District, not super far from where we are right now, but not close either to here in Shore. And we got a pretty good showing in the uh, away stands right now. I mean, it's not right. full by any means, but a good showing. Talk to me about that. Well, we have, uh, if you see our students over there in the construction outfits. Tell uh, me more about that. Why are they in the construction uh, outfits? They, every week they pick a theme. I'm not sure why they pick that, but they're, they're here hard at work. They've been hard at work <laughs> in school. Uh, they're hard at work cheering on the, their, their classmates um, and the student athletes here tonight. They, the B squad is what they're called. Uh, they've got a lot of great spirit. Um, over the last, this is my seventh year as superintendent. I can say honestly, over these seven years and uh, the seventh football season, they really bring a great, great enthusiasm and, and uh, attitude and, and just bring a lot of fun to the games. I asked this class question to the Troy principal. I'm going to ask it to you as well. What is something about Vandalia Butler City Schools, specifically Butler High School, that you guys all know about, but maybe the Miami Valley at large doesn't know? What, what's a little insider fact that we could share with everybody? You know, I, I would have to characterize that. I think, I think their costumes tonight actually uh, exemplify that very well. Hardworking. Uh, Vandalia Butler community is very hardworking. Uh, community um, values the schools, values the education, but definitely the hard work. And, you know, like I said, over the last three years, we put a lot of hard work into it. Starting with the uh, first year back in COVID, we, we fought hard to stay in school all year, and we did. And we built on success ex after success after success after that. So I think uh, their, their costumes and theme tonight really exemplify what we're all about. Of course. I got one last question for you here. Like I said, the football score right now tonight is 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm not going to have you speak for the coaches or anything like that because we'll We'll let them do that. But just generally speaking, as a fan and a member of the sports community, uh, what is it like for you guys going to football games, watching them? I mean, you're obviously an administrator, but I just want to hear more of your perspective on that. You know, uh, football is a tough sport. Uh, there's a lot of commitment, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of accountability individually and, and team-wise. Um, our coaches do a great job. We have a new coach this year um, who, who – uh, came um, was on the staff last year we had a, a coaching change as our former coach took a administrative position in another school district um, so he's really uh, built off of what coach Cates did um, and building a great culture hard-working culture but a, a togetherness and and I think those are the values that are learned out here on the field that really are very very important to the success of our students as they, uh, you know, graduate from high school and go into life, either, you know, the next step in college or the workforce or the military. So uh, those lessons that you learn here on the field, it's it's what it's all about, and it's fun. You are so well-spoken. Must be an inspiration to all of your students. i got to say, we chat with all kinds of ministers. You were one of our favorite ones. I see you once a year, so it's That's a right. pleasure to chat with next you. Year. Of course, my very last question for you, this is probably going to be just a short answer here. we still got a lot of football season left to play this year. 
What's that one game you got circled on the calendar? Well, you know, we have quite a few rivalries uh, in, in the conference. Um, Tip City's probably going to be, you know, I'd have to say, if I if I could speak for our students, it's probably Tip City. Yeah, what's that Tip City week going to look like? That's going to be, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a lot of hype. They're very, very, very good. Um, and I know they'll be hyped too. So uh, it should be a fun week. Like I said, always a pleasure to chat with you. But let's make it more than a once a year. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You guys come to Butler anytime. Uh, of course, it is 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. We're going to toss to a quick commercial break. Welcome back to your halftime show. It is 0-0 zero, zero here at halftime. And, of course, we are chatting with lots of our administrators from both schools here at halftime. Now joined by our friend Chris Piper, the superintendent here at Troy City Schools. Lots to talk about, both football, but not football questions as well. Chris, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm feeling good. Happy to have you. We were just chatting before while we were in the commercial break. We got the crowd size tonight. Why don't we talk more about that? How, how is it looking for a Thursday night crowd? I'm pretty impressed by the show out tonight. Uh, good crowd. Pretty nice weather night, though, but you never know on a Thursday, so it's not quite like a football Friday night, but really happy with the home crowd. Of course, we actually see your band playing right now behind you, yeah. and that's just a emblematic uh, of your entire student body here, everybody that comes together for a football night. Maybe you can talk to me a little bit about that, the band in particular, but also everything else it takes to put a, a football event together. Well, I'm a recovering athletic director myself, so there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, Troy is a great place for all of our programs, but especially football. There's just something about it here. Our band is amazing. Our student section is amazing. Our team is working hard. So it's just a, it's always a fun thing for Troy City Schools for a football game. Of course, like you said, I like that term of recovering athletic director. <laughs> yes. Definitely a lot of work that goes into that. I'm sure you're enjoying your role as superintendent now. Let's just talk about Troy City Schools overall. Uh, who are you guys? I mean, what, how would you describe the mission or the primary role of Troy City Schools? Well, our mission is to help our, inspire our kids to dream big, work hard, and be great. So uh, that's what we try to do every day, and I, I really like the work that we're doing. It's a very positive energy to the start of this school year. Some challenges weather-wise for us, but uh, it's been so hot, it's a little miserable. But our teachers and our staff are great and love kids. All right, we got time for one last question, okay. and I just want to talk to you about fall sports in general here. Yeah. What is, outside of football, the sport you want us to highlight? Make sure we come and support as well. Oh, gosh, I, I can't pick just one. We have kids in so many different things working hard. Uh, it's so fun to see them just being involved and having fun and working hard and having that camaraderie. So all of our programs are amazing. Chris, of course, we chatted with you all about the importance of the academics. We chatted with the other ministers about that as well. That's why now we are checking in with our scholar-athletes. Throughout the 2023 season, the Jeff Schmidt Auto Group will recognize an exceptional senior student scholar-athlete from each participating school. Here are this week's Jeff Schmidt Auto Group Scholar Athletes. From Butler, Natalie Shanehair. Natalie's a member of the Aviator Tennis, Cross Country, Basketball, and Track and Field teams. She was named MVL Player of the Year in Tennis and All-Conference in all four sports. She's the captain of the tennis, basketball, and track and field teams. Natalie has a 4.545 GPA and is a member of the National Honor Society and is ranked second in her class. She received the Ohio Tennis Coaches Association Silver Racket Award for excellence in academics and athletics. Community service is a big part of Natalie's life. She volunteers with youth basketball and tennis camps with disabled adults and with the Summer of Service group at her church. From Troy, Parker Nichols. Parker has a 4.41 GPA and is a member of the Trojan football and track and field teams. He's a three-year varsity letter winner in football and is a captain of the football team. He's also a two-year varsity letter winner in track and field and also lettered in wrestling. He's a member of the National Honor Society and treasurer of the Interact Club and has been named to the FCA principals list for three years. Parker volunteers for the Miami County Special Olympics and plans to major in economics or political science in college. And he also hopes to play football in college. The Jeff Schmidt Auto Group is proud to sponsor the Scholar Athlete Award, featured on Thursday Night Lights. We are honored to recognize these scholar athletes from all over the Miami Valley for their outstanding academic and athletic achievements. Welcome back to Lee's, Lee's famous, famous recipe chicken. And without him and his team, you know, probably wouldn't be possible. It takes all of our major sponsors to make this happen. We're going to chat with them a little bit about what's going on over at Lee's, plus just football in general. How are you doing, Cameron? Good. How about yourself? I'm feeling real good. Happy to be chatting with you. Why don't we talk about that in general? Why are you and the team over at Lee's 
happy to be a major sponsor of what we're doing here with Thursday Night Lights. Sure. I mean, community has always been important to us. Uh, we try and be involved as much as we can out there in the community. So what a better day to do it. Thursday Night Lights here playing some football. Now, I know you played high school football back in the day, and you probably know firsthand about why shining a light on kids who are playing these sports is such a big deal for those who have aspirations past high school, but for those who, for this is it for them, tell me a little bit from your perspective why helping us shine a light on them specifically is a goal of what you guys are doing. Sure. I mean, these kids, you know, from firsthand, they work so hard during the summer and the off season, you know, the season really never stops for them. So it's awesome to shine a light down on these kids working hard. All right, let's talk chicken for a second. I know you guys recently had some positive news come down the pipeline, a big ranking from a Pretty reputable source. You want to give me some details here? Sure, absolutely. USA Today actually voted Lee's the number one fast food fried chicken in America. So pretty big news on our end. Well, congratulations. Let's just talk a couple things real quick so we can get people some Lee's in front of them. Where is the best way for them to find a location here in the Miami Valley where they can enjoy some of your chicken? Absolutely. We have 12 locations in the Miami Valley. Um, just open up your maps, type in Lee's, and all of our locations are going to show up on your map. So come out, uh, see us at Lee's. All right, the last thing I want to make sure we get in there, just in general, why are you a fan of this beautiful time of fall when football season is rolling? You can feel it in the air. I woke up today and walked outside, and it felt like football outside. So this is a very exciting time for me. Uh, exciting time for the fans around here and it's going to be great to watch football come back well we're thankful that you and your team are a big sponsor of our broadcast this year and of course thank you so much for being here we really appreciate your time hey thanks for having me appreciate it the halftime report has been sponsored by wright and schulte Welcome back to Thursday Night Lights. Lee's Thursday Night Lights presented by Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. We are ready for the second half kickoff presented by Wright and Schulte. A short kick taken by Butler's Mason Rechner. And it could be a positive game. Past the 35 is Devin Strobel, the Troy captain on the return. And the Trojans will have great starting field position. And we're going to have some late flags after the play. Here's a look at some of the halftime stats and Troy basically dictating the tempo, but they don't have any points to show for it. They had a couple touchdowns called back because of holding penalties. They had a 29-yard field goal attempt right in the last minute of the first half that went wide to the right. And Keith Byers, they've done everything right except put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, they get that, that crucial stat there, the penalties. They get twice as many penalties as Butler. They get 6-3, and they get you know, all costly penalties. But Butler starts the half with a, with a costly 15-yard penalty. So I guess that's going to help even things out going into this second half. So Troy, again, they've had the better momentum in terms of moving the ball up and down the field. Just no points to show for it so far. We'll see if this opening drive of the second half yields anything yeah, different. Butler's defense has been solid. You know, they've been more, you know, bend but don't break. But then when they had their back against the wall, they gave uh, Troy nothing. First down for the Trojans at the Butler 49-yard line. A pitch to Dakota Manson who spins around one blocker and gets a short gain of about two, three yards. Going to set up second down and long. That was Donovan Collins on the stop for the Aviator defense. You know, the way this game is shaping up, especially the first half, uh, you know, Troy had a really good drive going at the end of, you know, in a turnover. And Butler hasn't turned the ball over either. They've had, you know, they've had their moments. Not a lot of yards. But they haven't turned the ball over. Yes. That's one of the reasons why they're still in this game. And uh, and because of Troy has turned the ball over, that's why we're still at 0-0. So let's see who makes the, you know, who imposes who will on what going in this second half. It was on Troy's opening drive that Aiden Kirkpatrick threw an interception. And then Jahari Ward with the carry up the middle for about another quick yard. That's still going to set up that third down and long from about the 46-yard line. Yeah, that Butler defense is physical. <laughs> they will hit you. Well, Troy averaged about 55 points in their first two wins against Dunbar and Greenville. I think unless we get a absolute showcase of offense, I'm not sure they'll be able to match that average tonight. They're going to have to score in defense and special teams tonight to get 55 points. But Butler... They were able to keep Northbound in check for a significant portion of time in week one, and then they held Piqua to just a field goal last week. As on third down, a swing pass to Dakota Manson. He able to maneuver around one defender. And it's going to be close, but I think he's still a little short. Line. 
Dakota Manson has been the key receiver for Kirkpatrick tonight, and that could have resulted in another first down, though they will mark him short, fourth yeah, and one. I don't think they're hesitating. I think they're going for it on fourth down here. You know, uh, Vendale Butler only has 34 yards of offense, so they like where they are. No hesitation. Coach Everhart has got the play already dialed up, and he's ready to go. Overload, unbalanced left. Are they gonna, I mean, unbalanced right, or here they come with it. Well, Jahari Ward, the carry. He got the first down off the right tackle on a drive in the first quarter. He gets one on a right tackle run in the <laughs> third quarter. So, Troy. Yeah, the unbalanced line. They had a right tackle, a tight end, and another tight end, and another tackle. So, they had him. Yeah, they had a whole bunch of beef on that right side of that offensive line. And speaking of beef, the first down is presented by Arby's. So, Troy. Excellent segue. E. Groovy trying to open <laughs> the scoring here as we're just under 9.46 to play in the third quarter. Here they go, they unbalance again. They got both the tackles on the right side, and then the tackle comes back to get his own normal uh, offensive set. And then you see a couple offensive players shift from right to left, and, and it's Dakota Manson on the handoff, and he's going to be tripped up at the backfield. Not fooled on the play with Sam Mitchell, number four. He made contact behind the line of scrimmage, and that play results in a short loss, loss of about three, so we'll be second and 13. Now, I mentioned that in the first half. You know, did. defensive penetration. You want to play on the offensive side of the field. Offense, you want to play on the defense the side of the field so who's going to control the line of scrimmage and no matter what your skill positions are you need those big guys up front on both sides of the, front of the ball to, you know to control the line of scrimmage and so we have a big stalemate today and a There's quick a handoff sweep. jet sweep on the carry is logan ullery first time we've called his name tonight and that's going to be a gain back to the original line of scrimmage but it still means now third down in the long for the trojan offense yeah, I mean, we, we talked about that. Third down. Who's going to win the battle of third down? You, you know, which wh which defense is going to win it? And overall, it's been both defenses. Troy has done well on defense, getting, you know, Butler off the field. And Butler's done a good job of keeping getting Troy, uh, Troy off the field on third down. So these third downs are crucial. So ball back to the Butler 37-yard line. Third down and 10 as Troy... Trying to set the tempo on this opening drive of the second half. Again, they got the ball to start the second half as Kirkpatrick throws to his right. Caught by Ullery, quickly by one defender. He has a first down inside the red zone, and Sam Mitchell alert the with on the ground, tackle. But They're going to call him down. Down by contact. Sam Mitchell hustled over to make the stop to prevent a touchdown for Ullery, but Ullery does move inside the 20. That's a gain into the Donato's delivery zone. Donato's a great pickup for after the game, either online or by the phone. Donato's every piece is important, and that also means a first down for the Trojan offense presented by Arby's. And you see there, great carry by Ullery. Mitchell did well to prevent the touchdown, but the ball came out. It was caused by the ground. So it was a first down. Ball at the 11-yard line for Troy. They can get a first down at the 1. Jahari Ward up the right side. Able to get by one man, but not by a second. So all he can do to prevent a loss. In fact, they may give him a loss of about 1. So second and 11. Trying to get some light to him in the press box. I can't hardly see some of my notes. <laughs> The joy of the sun setting. Yes, indeed. As great as it is that we don't feel the heat from the sun. As there's Troy Everhart, second year head coach of the Trojans. He is familiar with Miami Valley football after spending some time at a school in California. Well, Vandale and Butler, you know, last time there was this situation at the end of the half, they kept him out of the end zone and off the scoreboard and they're faced with it again. Well, Ward, but Ward has uh, something to say about that right now. Inside the five to about the four, so that will be third down and three upcoming for the Trojan offense. Yeah, I see uh, Vendaya not leaving this. <laughs> They're going for they it's in four down territory. Even though they can still get a first down. You know, it's third and third and two. You know, I think they're going for it on fourth down with today, unless they have a massive loss here. You know, they're feeling the momentum. You know, still the opening drive, and they had the ball. You know, here we are, six minutes and 25, 24, you know, to go in the, in the, in the quarter. 
and you know every possession it means something and a handoff to Dakota Manson oh, but boy. there's a flag on the play I think it's half the distance that's gonna be enough for a first down again Troy because they won the opening toss coin toss and deferred they we received the ball for the second half, so this is the first possession of the entire second half. Butler offense has not yet seen the field since halftime. Well, I thought it would be enough for the first down, but apparently not. Got to be third and third inches. And one. Yep. <laughs> they have enough, or they can get a first down at the one. And then the chains will reset to a goal to go situation. I got to get a ball to my big, my big tailback back here, Big Ward. He's the only man in the backfield with Kirkpatrick under center. Kirkpatrick takes a quick pause to glance toward the home sideline. On third down, a handoff to Manson. Quickly around the end, breaking a tackle and into the end zone for the opening touchdown. Dakota Manson from two yards out, and the Trojans are on the board in the third quarter. They're finally giving the home field something to cheer about. That touchdown presented by Donato's as Dakota Manson, the two-yard run, and he had a touchdown catch in the first quarter called back because of holding, but no penalty on this play, and the Trojans are on the board first. And six minutes and 14 second opening drive of the third quarter. That's how you want to start the half up, and it ended in six. It did. They would like to have seven. They want one more point. Cameron Stoltz on to try the extra points. A stoppage, though, before the snap. Butler, I don't think, had enough players ready at the line. We were rushing to get the 11th man on the field. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't think the referee's going to help them this time. <laughs> They're trying to get set. You know, in these games, every point is important. These close games. You don't take extra points for, for, for granted. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up from Cameron Stoltz, and the extra point is good. So with 5.46 to play in the third quarter, Dakota Manson from two yards scoring the opening touchdown for the Troy Trojans. And they have a 7-0 lead on Butler. The Aviators get their first drive of the second half after this break. You're watching Thursday Night Lights from Troy Memorial Stadium. Time out. Welcome back to Troy Memorial Stadium. 7-0, the Troy Trojans leading the Butler Aviators with 5.46 to play in the third quarter. After Dakota Manson opened the scoring for the Trojans on a two-yard touchdown run. And Troy, after many close calls and opportunities in the first half, they weren't able to capitalize before halftime. But they get the ball first to start the second half. And they quickly go down the field. And the drive ends with a handoff from Aiden Kirkpatrick to Dakota Manson, the junior, on the touchdown carry. So now Butler, they've given up their first touchdown in two weeks. And this kickoff presented by Wright and Schulte. It's taken quickly and no return on the play at the Butler 23-yard line. So a quick look at the drive summary presented by Rand Associates, a 10-play, 46-yard drive. Again, it ends in a Dakota Manson one-yard touchdown run that accounts for the opening points of the game, 7-0. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Tase Joshi greeting you from Troy Memorial Stadium. Glad you could make us a part of your Thursday night, and it's turned out to be a great game so far. Yeah, absolutely it is. You know, now the answer is... Can Troy, the question is, can Troy come out and answer, you know, their opening drive of the half? And on their first first down of the second half, it's a handoff to number 11, Taven Crump. He gets a short gain out of the play, but it's going to set up second and long. I mean, this is a crucial drive. You don't necessarily have to score in this drive, but you don't want to go three and out either. You know, you you know they haven't really able to well, say for the first two plays of the, of the game, when they went and got first downs, they had much not really happened for them offensively. And they've had some field position, so they need a reset also. So let's see how they start, you know, this opening drive with the second half. On second down, Cyber under center. Looking to his right, he throws it. Was off the fingertips of Crump, but it falls incomplete. Right idea, but Cyber Yeah, probably a little, extra, a little extra pepper on that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you saw Crump cutting to the inside. Could have potentially resulted in a big gain, but the pass just got a little out ahead of Crump. Yeah, you know, you don't want these, you know, these third and loans. You don't want to.
go against this defense too often with that. You know, we talk so much about uh, Vendee and Butler's defense in the first half. You know, they bend but don't break. But, hey, Troy's throwing a, a, a shutout also. So their defense isn't, very, isn't too shabby either. So on third down from the nine-yard line, line to gain is the 33. Seibert in the pocket, quickly finds himself under pressure, and the first sack of the game is going to force a Butler three and out. The Troy defense able to quickly reach Luke Seibert, Nathan Wyatt, the Troy linebacker, first on the scene. When we talk about winning in the trenches, and I mean, they get penetration early. Seibert couldn't do anything with it, nowhere to go. You know, sometimes, like I said, the best decision is no decision. Just take the loss and, you know, let it go to fourth down. You look try at, next series. You look at how many Trojans were in pursuit of Seibert. It was all the Butler line and the Butler backfield could do to prevent everybody. But ultimately, Nathan Wyatt, as this punt end over end, it will take a couple of bounces but will not reach midfield. So Troy will take over again with great field position with 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Troy with the ball with a seven-point lead on Thursday Night Lights. Welcome back to Lee's Thursday Night Lights. We are greeting you from Troy Memorial Stadium, the county seat of Miami County. And the Troy Trojans with the ball and a 7-0 lead on the Butler Aviators on week three of Thursday Night Lights in the 2023 season. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Tej Joshi, and our crew. As Jahari Ward on the first play of this drive for the Trojans quickly gets back to the line of scrimmage, but maybe a short gain, if any. So it's going to bring up second down and a little less than 10, maybe nine and a half, as the clock is now coming up on four minutes to go in the third quarter. We talked about the importance of Troy setting the tempo early and scoring. Now the opportunity to keep buyers for Troy to extend their lead and make it a, a two-score game now yeah, on this drive. It's not very often you get to start in other team's territory, and when you do, you want to come away with points. And get, you know, you do that by, you know, just racking up, you know, first downs. You love big, big plays, but you want to do the little things right. Well, Kirk Patrick rolling to his right, couldn't get the ball out of his hands, and he is brought down for a loss. So that's going to bring up third and about 12. You know, he had a receiver in the middle of the field saying, I'm open, but it's easy to say that when, when he does, the receiver doesn't realize the quarterback is running the rest, and, you know, he couldn't plant and find you you know to get you the ball and Sam Mitchell who has been Sam on the spot for the most part for the aviator defense involved in the stop of the play so third he's had an outstanding game he has not had an outstanding game the Butler defense in general has been top notch and they, they need to be right to now on this third down they third, need a three and out here third and 11 third and 11 for the Trojans Kirkpatrick back under center and there's a stoppage of play as Troy Everhart's going to call timeout with just under three minutes to go in the third quarter. So week three of the high school football season officially commencing tonight with this matchup in the MVL. Of course, conference play started last week. And again, both teams are 1-0 in the conference. Troy going on the road to Greenville and winning very comfortably against the Green Wave. While Butler, they were able to put the week one loss to Northmont behind them. They opened... MBL play on the road at Piqua. Never an easy place to go, Alexander Stadium, but not just Butler winning 27 to 3 the final. Now Piqua is 0-2. They had a tough loss themselves to Lima Senior to open week one, but at the same time, going to Alexander Stadium and walking out of Alexander Stadium with the win. That's a oh, big that's a heck of confidence Butler. build, you know, and I think they're relying on some of that, you know, here tonight. You know, they just started off 0-2. I think it's easy to go to 0-3 because, you know, they're coming in here on the road against a, a big, strong Troy team who's already 2-0. and But they're playing with a different kind of confidence when you're 1-1 one and one as opposed to 0-2. And it's showing up right now. They got Troy in a situation third and long. And I'm sure the defense said, just get off the field. They would love a turnover, but they just want to get off the field here. On third of 11, Kirkpatrick with a wayward pitch that is handled eventually by Dakota, or excuse me, that's not Dakota Manson, that's number 21, Aiden Gorman. He quickly gets out of bounds and is able to get about six or seven yards out of the play, but it's still fourth down for the Trojans. Yeah, I mean, it's enough to think about going forward on fourth down since your defense has been so stout. But, it's, you know, it's in that, that gray area. It's too long for a field goal, of course, and maybe too short for a punt. I and mean, you're going to just trust your defense 
since they're playing so well if you don't get this fourth and five. Ball at the 34-yard line, and they will go for it. They can get a first down at the 30. They may go long count, see if they can jump outside and get the first down. Now penetration. Off, and Gorman met in the backfield for a loss, and the Butler defense again standing firm. That is Riley Seibert, the sophomore, with the stop. And the Butler defense again forcing a turnover on downs. You got to injure Troy Trojan on the field. Riley Seibert. That defense is firing up. As they should be after a play like that. I mean, that's what you do. I mean, they figure, you know, just keep on giving you chances. Mm -hmm. Give your offense a chance. They've already turned Troy over once, and, you know, Vendaya haven't turned the ball over. Yeah. That's why they're still in this game at this point. Troy's first drive of the game, they were driving. They got to about the 21, the 22-yard line in Butler territory before Aiden Kirkpatrick threw an interception. And like you say, Butler has not turned the ball over. They haven't necessarily had the sustained drives and the sustained time of possession that Troy has enjoyed, but they have been able to keep the Troy offense in check. Yeah, it's staying, the game is still in striking distance. You know, 0-7, zero, zero that's a one-score ball game. You know, in special teams matter. Every play matters, so every drive, you know, matters. So this is all, all of them, all the, all the drives from here on out, every series is going to be real crucial. You know, how do you finish off this quarter, you know, if you're Troy and Vendee? Well, a couple of the medical or the training staff was attending to Caleb Dreyer, one of the Troy offensive linemen. The good news, he was up and able to walk to the sideline under his own power. So play will resume shortly with 1.59 to go in the third quarter. Butler out for their second drive of the third quarter, trailing 7-0. Again, those of you may remember, we had them on Thursday Night Lights last year. The final score of that game against Stebbins was 10-7. So another low-scoring game potentially in the cards tonight. Quick pass complete to, first time we've called his name on offense, Julius Rusk, the punter. Man, he came out throwing on first down. They haven't done that, you know, at all tonight. So that caught Troy a little bit off guard. So Luke Seibert with the completion on first down to Julius Rusk, and that's going to set up second and about two, close to midfield, in fact. I'm sure they like second and two as opposed to second and nine, where they've been facing a lot of third, second and third and longs. Both teams 1-0 in the MBL. Troy 2-0 overall after a season opening win against Dunbar. Seibert looking to his right. Pass same, complete same to Rusk again. Broken tackle inside the 40, bounce. and that's going to result in a Butler first down as they move past midfield, and that Butler first down is presented by Arby's. I mean, that's a good job by Seibert. He, he felt the blitz coming, got rid of the ball, right away threw it on target, and give your, give your man a chance to make a play. And they did. They're moving the chain. So two plays, two completions from Luke Seibert to Julius Rusk on this drive. Again, the first down presented by Arby's. And now Butler sets up at the Troy 39-yard line. You know, see, has been decisive with the ball, which I like that. He's not, you know, ready again. He's giving this guy a chance to make the play. Again, looking for Rusk, and oh. the ball nearly caught and then nearly Almost. intercepted. <laughs> Seibert was going for the floater to Rusk, who yeah. was hit right as he was about to recoil the ball in the, or reel the ball in for the catch. Ball hung up in the area. They he were almost the, got a chance to catch it again. He almost had a chance to catch it again, but so did Troy as a chance to record the interception. Yeah, more often than not, tip balls end up in a defensive hand. That was Logan Ullery on the defense uh, covering Rusk, and then Noah Miller nearly came down with a turnover. That would have been Butler's first turnover of the night. I mean, that's why defensive coaches tell players to run to the ball, run to the ball. Good things are happen. Come up a little short that time, but that's what happens when you run, run to the ball. Seibert nearly stumbled out of the snap, but he keeps his balance. Now met in the backfield. He's going to do all he can. Actually, turns he got a, some, a negative into a positive. He did turn a negative into a positive. It could have been a lot worse than it ultimately was, but it's still going to be third and very long for the Aviators. You know, he got a lot of time, you know, to go in this game, but it's uh, 26, you know, uh, 24 seconds left in the play clock, and I mean, in a, in a game clock. So, are they going to run another play or just go to fourth quarter since it's third down? 
to make sure you get the play called. I think he's going to go to fourth down. Yeah, they have, this is a crucial third and nine. They have not started the snap count yet, and we're now under 10 seconds to go. So, yeah, yeah so that is we're exactly, going to go to fourth quarter. Zach needs he wants thinking. to be sure. So we do have a score, thanks to Dakota Manson's one-yard touchdown run. Troy is on the board, 7-0, but Butler is on the move inside the 40-yard line. And we'll have the fourth quarter after this break. You're watching Thursday Night Lights. We played 36 minutes at Troy Memorial Stadium. 12 minutes of regulation remain on week three of Lee's Thursday Night Lights, presented by Cincinnati area Toyota dealers. Troy with the 7-0 lead, but Butler facing third down and nine in Troy territory as they try to tie the game. Matt Digby, Keith Byers, Taze Joshi, and our crew, thank you for making us a part of your Thursday evening. On third down, Cyber quickly thought about throwing right, and it's chased down and sacked back at the 45-yard line. Exactly not what Butler wanted to open the fourth quarter, but Noah Miller, who nearly had an interception on an earlier play in this drive, he makes the sack. That has Butler now in real decision mode. You know, we were talking about on the, during the uh, quarter change, you know, if would they go for it on fourth down, and I said if it's fourth and five or less, I think they'll go for it, as long as they don't lose any yardage. But they did lose. They lost. They got sacked they here. Did on uh, third down so now fourth down is a moot point you know defensive butler's been playing great both defenses have been playing lights out so you got to you know give your defense a chance to get you another stop julius rusk on the punt he had a couple of catches on this nice punt there drive and this punt is actually going to pin. did it touch you <laughs> not sure it touched but it definitely did not go in the end zone. zone so again that was a good call i mean you give your defense that a chance to you know to stop them. You got their backs up against the wall. Go three and out. You're gonna have great field position. Troy officially 11:09 from going three and zero. If they can hold on to the seven nothing lead, timeout from Troy Memorial Stadium. We greet you live from Troy, the county seat of Miami County in Western Ohio. It is week three of Thursday Night Lights, and the Troy High School Trojans with a seven nothing lead over the Butler Aviators. As they look to win their home opener and move to 3-0 overall, 2-0 in the Miami Valley League. But their first drive of this fourth quarter, they are pinned at their own seven after a great punt from Julius Rusk. It was an excellent punt. Got, it, got, got the ball to stop inside the 10. Kirkpatrick with a quick handoff to Jahari Ward, who quickly finds a hole up the middle. Good for at least five, maybe more, as he was not far well, from reaching good, the 15-yard yeah, yeah, line. a seven-yard run. I mean, he's like a sledgehammer. He is so hard to get down, and he keeps pounding away at it. And when you do that, eventually it's like the dam is going to break, and he's going to bust off a long run. You just never know when it's going to happen. But you're going to want to tackle him for four, four quarters. They've done a good job for three, but it's four quarters when the game is going to be won. You saw images there of Troy Everhart, the Trojan Tech coach, as Ward sprints forward again for another short gain. This time it is enough for a first down. The Trojans first down presented by Bathmasters. And the clock will stop while they move the chains, but that's another factor that Everhart's going to be keeping an eye on over the next couple of minutes. Absolutely. Not just moving down the field, but also eating up clock. Right now the clock is quickly yeah. becoming the Trojans' I mean, friend. Yes, that first drive of the second half it, 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 it ended in points of 7 nothing. It was 6 minutes and 14 seconds. They would love another 6 minutes and 14 second drive here to the end in points. Kirkpatrick thought about a pitch, eventually does so to Dakota Manson, who quickly gets out to the 20-yard line, rolls across to the 21-yard line, so a gain of about four. Manson has the only touchdown of the game, a one-yard touchdown run to cap off the opening drive of the second half. I'm telling you, I mean, it's uh, Vandalia defense has played their guts out tonight. These kids are running to the football, and they have a turnover. It, but, you know, they, they, they uh, have an interception. But they're playing extremely hard. You, I mean, you got to love it. And that's what, you know, I think both teams get fired up for Thursday night football. You know, they know, they're on, they know their friends are around the area watching. They're trying to send a message to the other teams in their conference. You know, that we are for real. And I think both teams are showing that tonight. On second down, Kirkpatrick, a pass to an open Jahari Ward, yes, who has indeed. space and will quickly get out to midfield and eventually yes, taken down inside the Aviator 45-yard line. A big play 
for the Trojan offense on second down, and that's going to result in another Troy first down presented by Bathmasters. You know, they got him the ball in space here, and, you know, he is a load to get down once you get in his space. Runs extremely hard, has a good set of soft hands, so I think they're going to rely on him a lot this fourth quarter. Not often we've seen Ward in that situation where he has time to make the catch and run in open space. He's been more of a run-up-the-middle type of player tonight for the Trojan offense, but a chance for him to showcase his versatility. You know, something else we haven't talked about a lot tonight. You know, this game is on natural surface, meaning it's on grass. It's not on anything artificial field turf, and that starts to wear on your legs as a visiting team because if Vandaya plays on a field turf, Troy plays on natural grass, where you got to actually pick your feet up and put them back down, and you got to be in, in excellent shape, you know, here in the fourth quarter. And uh, we're going to see how, what condition is going to play a role here in this fourth quarter, too. Another quick gain of about seven yards on the first down following the long completion pass to Jahari Ward. And already, Troy is within the 40 yard line in Butler territory, looking to add to the 7 0 lead as the clock ticks under eight minutes. Kirkpatrick in the shotgun. Handoff to Dakota Manson, who thought about going to his right, forced to cut back left, and actually will lose There's a couple of yards. Too many on the play. aviator jerseys there. <laughs> he wanted to cut back, but everything he, all he saw was his aviator jerseys. Derek Hobbs on the stop for the Aviators. Well, this is week three of Thursday Night Lights. We still have seven more games to bring your way, including our week four matchup, which we will come to you on next Thursday, September 7th. The game is going to be at Xenia High School, but it's going to be an outstanding matchup. Trotwood Madison taking on the Alter Knights. Alter, we actually have learned they played tonight against Meadowdale and moved to 2-1 and one with a big win against the Lions. Trotwood has a big game of their own coming up tomorrow against Springfield. But Trotwood at Alter, that will be our game for Thursday Night Lights, week number four. And those of you who have followed us for many years, you may remember that was our week four matchup last year. Trotwood, Madison, when they hosted Alter, Alter dominated that first half before the Rams came from behind to win in the second half. That was actually their first win of the season, and they were able to parlay the success, the momentum of that win, eventually making the playoffs and making it a couple rounds deep into the playoffs. That's going to be a great game to watch next week. I can't wait to see here and uh, cover that game. Trotwood Alter again that game will be at Xenia's Doug Adams Stadium next Thursday at 7 o'clock on third down because of the penalty Kirkpatrick oh good scramble. throwback and a wide a open Gorman inside the 30 he inside the 20 on the he got a blocker inside the 10 touchdown Troy Kirkpatrick waited for the opening Aiden Gorman provided the outlet and the Trojans increased their lead to 13 nothing touchdown presented by Donato's I tell you, he caught that ball and went to a different gear. Everybody else was in third gear. He went to fifth gear. <laughs> and a snap of a finger. And a snap of a finger. You know, as a kid, he was probably on the side. Like, Coach, give me the ball. I got to play in me. Give me open. So two notable distance plays in favor of the Troy offense, where they've been slowly, steadily getting first downs with an average of about seven, eight yards of play. Every so often they get a first down as the extra point from Cameron Stoltz is good. But two big plays, the screen pass to Jahari Ward, and now the screen pass to Aiden Gorman, resulting in a touchdown. Troy leads 14-0 with 6.43 to go on week three of Thursday Night Lights. Timeout. 14-0, Troy leading Butler with 6.43 to go in regulation time on week three of Thursday Night Lights. As the Trojans, they open the scoring about this time in the second half on a one-yard run from Dakota Manson. And they have added to that lead thanks to a long touchdown pass from Aiden Kirkpatrick to Aiden Gorman. The two Aidens teaming up on that pass-catch reception in the Trojans' favor. Cameron Stoltz ready to send this kickoff to the Aviators. This kickoff presented by Wright and Schulte. If I'm Vandalia, we haven't got much started on offense, so let special teams come up and make a play. And this is taken by Austin Flory, quickly up to the 20, able to stay in bounds along the sideline, actually get out to near the 34-yard line. A good return, a promising return. Oh. Is there a flag? There was a yeah. flag after the play. But Here's here. another look at the touchdown pass. You see so much space for Gorman to maneuver in between the aviators. Yeah, he's going to show that to his children one day. 
So look at your pop. <laughs> take one and get to, to the house. Excellent, excellent play. That's one that you're talking about for a long time. And by the time the Butler defender was able to make contact, it was he would already pass the goal line. He kept possession of the ball to eliminate any possibility that the ball would be ruled out. Well, you take a look at the drive presented by Rand Associates, a seven-point, 93-yard driver. Remember, it started off a great punt from Julius Rusk. Troy was pinned back at their seven-yard line, but Gorman on the 44-yard reception has doubled the Trojans' lead. Absolutely. So there was indeed a flag I mean, the after referees the, are taking after control the of the game. Return. It wasn't anything physical that happened over here on the sideline. It was, I'm sure it was verbal, and the referee, you know, have ears. <laughs> Which is a good job by the referees to keep in control, you know, of the game. And now for Butler, because 14 points, yes, there's not a lot of time left, just six and a half minutes, but 14 points, it's not an insurmountable deficit to come back from. But the matter is... The you know, time is not your friend at this point. You need a touchdown quickly, and then you need another defensive stop. Right. You, you can't panic with six and a half minutes to go in the game, six minutes, 37 seconds. What you have to do is just know we got to get points on the board. And points, I mean a touchdown. Luke Seibert on first down, rolling to his right, gets the throw off intended for Rust, but beyond his reach and out of bounds. So that will be second down and 10 coming up for the Aviators. You know, I saw always try to remind the players, you know, you know, even my teammates when I play. We have no places in our playbook that's going to allow us. Hey, who's this guy on television here? <laughs> Let me wave to the fans. Yep, there, there. Hello, guys. <laughs> Alongside Keith Byers, I'm Matt Digby. Thanks for making us a part of your Thursday night here on My TV Dayton. We also greet those viewing on Facebook and on Dayton247now.com. Yeah, I mean, there's no play in the playbook that's going to get you 14 points. So let's go get six first, and then the next point, let's go get seven. You know, one play at a time, one score at a time. On second down, Cyber with a handoff up the middle. Not many runs up the middle tonight for the Butler offense, but it is a positive gain thanks to number six, Ramel Hayden, on the carry. But it's still going to be third down and about six upcoming. Yeah, I mean, I talked about it all night. You know, winning the battle of third down. I mean, and, you know, clearly uh, Troy's defense is doing that, and Van Day's defense isn't doing a bad job at it either. But, you know, Troy's, I mean, uh, Van Day's offense. They have got to get something going, in, you know, in right now. And so this is a crucial. You don't say you absolutely possibly have to get it, but right now they need to convert this third down. We have reached and surpassed the halfway point of the fourth quarter. A Seibert on third down, firing over the middle. It is caught. And, and when they're going to give him forward momentum. Where will they mark forward momentum? Yeah, he, they're giving it to him. This Ju one those left foot, right foot. Julius Rusk <laughs> was on the, the reception. And... The near official closest to us on the home sideline. He's not indicating for measurement. He says, no doubt, it's a first down yep. pickup. Move the chains. I love that about high school football. You know, either agree or disagree with the referees, but they are decisive on whether or not you got the first down. Now, very seldom all year we're going to see him actually bring the chains out to see if he was short or not. Now we have a brief stoppage of play. Rusk has had a couple of catches for the Aviators on this drive. That have resulted in positive gains. Yeah, and Russell will do everything guy for him. He plays defense, punts. And Butler with the first down pickup. That first down presented by Bathmasters. Referees want to make sure the game clock is right. They want to, I think they want more time on the clock. You know, Van Day is throwing the ball more often than not, you know, here at the end of the game. And so, as an offensive lineman, you know that defense is coming after you. Well, on first down, Cyber with a handoff up the middle. It's going to result in a They try to sneak a draw the in play. there, but it's hard to run that draw against an all-out blitz. When they're bringing more that you can block, you know, it's, it's extremely hard to uh, get that off. And also at this point of the game as the clock is now under five minutes to go in regulation time you're down two scores for Seibert is it maybe just not necessarily Hail Mary territory but perhaps technically not maybe throwing Hail Marys or throwing a or running the ball up the middle maybe it's just going to be passing from here on out as on yeah, second down and 15 Seibert quickly going down chance. the sideline just oh. beyond the reach just off his fingertips. He had his hands on it, but you got to give defense credit, too. Rusk, the intended receiver, but 
Some good pass defense on the part of the Troy defense. And there's a look at the Champions Trophy presented by Rand Associates. It will be going to the winner of tonight's game. Two weeks ago, it was the Xenia Buccaneers celebrating at home at Doug Adams Stadium after their big win over Beaver Creek. Last week, the Eaton Eagles taking home a trophy after their 49-7 win against the Richmond Red Devils. So who will claim the Champions Trophy tonight? It's a nice trophy. Presented by Rand Associates. Third down and 15 with 4.26 to go regulation time. And no doubt in your mind, Keith, fourth down territory for Butler? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, even though your defense is, you know, giving up a couple scores here, but you know you got two downs to get, what, 15 yards? You don't have to get it all right now, but you need to complete, you need to complete this pass. Seibert under center with two men in the backfield, two men to the left. And Cyber quickly looking to his right, intended for Rusk again, and just beyond the reach of Rusk on the coverage for Troy was Jaden Hackney, the defensive back, and now fourth and 15 coming up. Yes, excellent co uh, excellent coverage by uh, Troy. They double, double teamed in the corner, did his job, taking away the underneath stuff, and the safety guy over the top, making it extremely hard to fit that ball in there. So Troy officially four minutes, 20 seconds away from moving to 3-0 and if they can hang on to this 14-0 lead. Taking a look at the upcoming schedules for these two teams. Butler will be back in Vandalia next week when they take on West Carrollton. The Pirates currently 0-2. And, and they the Pirates are scheduled to host Fairborn tomorrow. That'll be a good game. So West Carrollton at Troy is the week four matchup. In the meantime, Butler will be home against Greenville. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor, Wright and Schulte. I'm attorney Michael Wright. I'm proud to be a sponsor of Thursday Night Lights again this year. I'm happy to take part in such a great community event. It is an honor to support this sponsorship, bringing families, communities, and people together to celebrate the sportsmanship of all athletes. Let's all celebrate together. And remember, if you've been injured in an accident, make the right choice. Full moon at Troy Memorial Stadium. Again, thank you for making us part of your Thursday evening from Troy Memorial Stadium. The Trojans with a 14-0 lead on Butler on week three of Thursday Night Lights. Here's a look at the Butler student section. They got the memo of a construction worker theme, neon vest theme. Working man, they've been working hard in the stands and on the field. I mean, that defensive Butler has been working. It's been a really, you know, uh, well well played football. It has on both sides. I mean, Troy and Vendaya, they, they're both making their respective, you know, schools, you know, proud of the way they play here on Thursday night nights. And definitely some lessons to take away from this game going forward. As we mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, both teams are scheduled to be home next week. Troy hosting West Carrollton. Butler will be back in Vandalia against Greenville. On fourth down and 15, Cyber rolling to his left. Has time to air out a long ball Give downfield a intended for Crump. It's a jump no, ball, it's a, it's a, and it's pulled down for an interception. The tie goes to the offense. Or yeah, is it's it a, double. a jump ball? Both of them have it. The tie goes to the offense, and the referee goes and agrees with me. They both caught it. It's simultaneous catch. Just like baseball, tie goes to the runner, tie goes to the offense. I know Troy fans don't like that, but that is the rule. Well, Caleb Akins was in the perfect spot for the Troy Trojans, but so was Braylon Crump for the Aviators. This is not the first 50-50 ball we've seen tonight, yeah. but look at it from that angle. I thought at first it looked like Akins may have pulled it away for the interception. Yeah, but it, nope. Nope. I know. <laughs> They're going to argue about that for the next five to ten years, but tie goes with offense. Well, a play that Butler absolutely needed. That's a first down presented by Bathmasters as Cyber rolling to his right, and he is close to another first down pickup. Yeah, he just almost, but the clock is still running, so they have to, you know, get this play called, get back in the huddle. That's the clock only stops on first downs to get a chance, the referee's a chance to, to set it. But did he call first down? Well, still short. They haven't changed the yardage marker over there. 
Well, what a pass and completion, and it is a completion. The 50-50 uh, goes, uh, as Keith mentioned, yep. goes to the offense. What a catch on the part of Braylon Crump to wrestle the ball away from Caleb Atkins. Here's the pass again. You look, and we again, we've seen multiple 50-50 yeah, balls throughout 50 the course 50. of the night. And a tag advantage goes to the offense in that situation. When you get an interception, you clearly have to take the ball away from the offensive player. And the ruling on the run by Luke Seibert after more deliberation. They have given it a first down on the run by Seibert. So that's another Butler first down presented by Bathmasters. And they'll the stop clock. the clock temporarily. This start again once they get it set. But, you know, now that we are definitely in four down territory. You know, Butler's going all in on this drive. You know, try to make sure you get a touchdown and orange side kick it. First and 10 from the 22. Seibert throwing to his right. And it is we got a incomplete, but we have a penalty flag from the back judge. <laughs> Russ is saying he caught the ball. You know, Troy is saying it, he got pushed off one. <laughs> and let's see what the referee said. What an eventful, being an offensive guy, we never push off. What an eventful couple minutes we have had after Troy increased the lead on the uh, screen pass from Aiden Kirkpatrick to Aiden Gorman for the touchdown that made it 14-0. This is Butler's ensuing drive, and they were facing a 4th and 15, but on that 4th and 15, that was the jump ball caught, and it's been all Butler ever since. So he did catch the ball. It is being ruled a catch, and that means another Butler first down presented by Bathmasters. And it also means because of the gain of the play, that has moved Butler for the first time. They are in the Donato's delivery zone. Donato's a great call for after the game, order online or by phone. So first down in the red zone. Aviators first play in the red zone is a handoff to Caden Bates. Can he get the angle? He does get the angle. Touchdown, Touchdown. Butler. Oh, they got momentum. Game on with 2.51 to go as Caden Bates from 10 yards out finds Pater. That touchdown brought to you by Donato's. I'll tell you, you know, I love games like this. I mean, like I said, we was at practice yesterday. You could just see in the Vendale Butler players that they believed in the senior, senior leadership. They believed in the head coach. And they was fortunate and happy to play on Thursday night. And they're representing themselves in their school very well. Mason Reckner on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up and the kick is good. So 2.51 to go in regulation. And we indeed have a game. It has been, it was a defensive battle in the first half. But now we've had three touchdowns and this the latest. Caden Bates on a 10 yard sweep run to the right. Able to win the bat, able to win the race to the corner. And now it's the Butler fans turn to celebrate after watching Troy open the scoring with two touchdowns in the second half. Well, do you onside kick it? Yeah. With 2.51, and you Butler does have all three outs. timeouts. Let's take a look at the scoring drive presented by Rand Associates. A 10-play, 60-yard drive that was capped off by the 10-yard run. But the key play, you have to go back to that 4th and 15. Luke Seiber putting up a jump ball. Again, we've said it already multiple times the last few minutes. We've seen multiple 50-50 jump balls. But as Keith alluded to, it always goes to the receiver. The tie goes offense. And from my vantage point, at least, it looked like originally Caleb Aikens' baby wrestled to the way for the interception. No, Braylon Crump was able to get back and force the 50-50. Right, but they were on the ground when he wrestled that ball yes. away. You can't, you know, it's, it's over. It looks like he's going up with an onside kick. He doesn't have a tee on the ball. He's got the football down right on the ground. Well, he may, he will have time to analyze that as Troy has called another timeout. They called their so. final timeout of the game. That's their second timeout. Yeah, they do They do have one left. Oh, they have one more left? Okay. So 2.51 to go as there you see the Butler special teams getting final instructions. With this quick stoppage of play, a chance for Troy to reset. Do you still go with the plan? You you thought, no doubt in your mind, that the Butler was going for the onside kick. Do you stick with that? Yes. Yeah, because you've already made the decision to do that. You know, and... Go for it. I, I'll say go for it because no matter what happens, you kick the ball long, you still got to stop them three down, three times. 
or if you go onside kick, at least you're giving yourself a chance to get the ball, and you still got your three timeouts. But if you kick it long, you know you're not getting the ball. Troy has been very efficient, yeah, you especially. You got the hands team out there. I used to be on the hands team. I love yep. to kick me the ball. <laughs> you know, I like to put teams away. So let's see who's going to get a chance to, you know, to try to seal the victory for Troy. This kickoff presented by Wright and Schulte. Rector with the kick. And it went the required 10 yards, but quickly covered up by a Troy player, number 20. And he kicked it a little too good. I think he wanted to, he got a little bit up under. He wanted to hit on top of that ball. He got underneath it, and the ball went up in the air. It's not the, the kick I'm sure he was, you know, aiming for. He was looking for that wicked hop. That was Marcus Cavanaugh with the recovery for the Trojans, who will take over at their own 45-yard line. So 2.49 to go. Butler does have all three timeouts left. And the way the defense has played, especially if they can find the success that kept the Trojans off the scoreboard in the first half, this game by no means over. You know, you know Troy knows all they need is, you know, two first downs and the game is over. You know, because they just run out of time. Do you risk putting the ball in the air? Kirkpatrick will line up under center with Ward awaiting the carry off off the right guard tackle out near midfield. They're that's going to a good opening drive. Yards. That's a good play at the series. At the drive, a good five six yard carry. And Butler's going to call their first timeout with 2:41 to go. Zach Geith in his first year as head coach, having been an assistant for many years with the Aviator program. You know, you, you, you put your defense has been solid all night. You know, and this is the, that drive, that moment in the game that you build it, you talk about in all season. You I positively absolutely have to get a three and out. This is what they need. They're looking for a three and out or a turnover. I mean, just because, you know, uh, Troy got five yards on first down, you know, have you seen uh, Vandalia get tackled for losses? So, you know, they, they've gotten penetration tonight. At the same time, from Troy's perspective, it's not necessarily you don't have to just keep handing the ball off to Jahari Ward. I mean, the two touchdowns tonight, one was a carry from Dakota Manson, one was a pass to a wide-open Aiden Gorman. So if you have one of those options presented to you, that could result in the third touchdown. And with 2.41 to go, potentially you're in a situation where Troy could ice the game with a score. Yeah, and this is where your team discipline really kicks in. You know, I, I talked about that in, in, in pregame. I'm the quarterback. Now you're in a huddle. You're telling them, hey, I'm going hard count. Going hard count and try to get uh, Vendee. You know they're going to be aggressive. Try to get them to jump off sides. Second down and five from midfield. And it's a quick handoff to Ullery. And he is maybe going to get a yard out of that. But, again, quickly met close to the line of scrimmage by the Butler defense. So Logan Ullery only gets about a yard. It's going to be third and four. They're barely back to the line of scrimmage. And a little bit beyond it. It is forward lean. Butler has called their second timeout with two and a half to go. So each team with one timeout left. Now I'm definitely going hard count. But I'm telling my guys, I'm trying to get them to jump offside, not us. So you know, I may, the quarterback may change the inflection of his voice, go, hut, hut, hut. you know, you want to get them to jump offside, not you. I don't think, I'd be surprised if they throw this ball. And if they do throw it, it's going to be a nice safe throw because you want the clock to run. Yes. The clock has been Troy's friend for some time now, especially since Aiden Gorman ran into the end zone for their second touchdown. It would not be a bad idea to get him the ball. And, you know, I've said you, you, you got Big Ward, who's been, you know, a sledgehammer all night long. And you, maybe you give him one more shot to get that first down because it's hard for the first guy to get him down. You know, he runs with such authority, runs hard. From Troy's perspective, if they don't get the first down here, do you go for it on fourth down? No, I'll make them go the long way. Well, here we go, third down and four. Troy needs to get to the Butler 45-yard line with 2.33 to go regulation time. Ward, the lone man in the backfield. He's trying to get him outside there. Manson in motion, and Manson direction. will take the handoff. And he's first met behind midfield, and he'll be tackled for a loss. And that worked exactly how Butler wanted it to work. Big stop made by number nine, Braylon Crump. The Aviators do call their final timeout, but they will get the ball back with a little over two minutes to go. Yeah, that's trusting and believing in your program. I mean, Big Ward had a big first down run of, you know, six yards. And 
They didn't get any, another yard after that. They went backward, and they, they got it the fourth down. Looked like they were going to get a first down out of that drive, but they got their three and out. You know, I don't know if Troy's going to take a chance and fake a, field, fake a punt twice well, in the same game. But well, te technically a third time because they tried it. That, it was called with right. a penalty. Then they tried it again, and, <laughs> and they then, got the first down. Back to back. To back. Devin Strobel, who is in the game right now, 22. You just see him entering your screen on the bottom left. He's the senior captain of the Trojans. What do you think, Matt? You call a fake or you're going to punt it back? That's, <laughs> that, that's why they pay Troy Everhart, though, Troy Everhart. the money to make this decision and not me. No, you don't do that. You punt it. You, you, you make Vendaya go 80-plus yards if possible. The tie the ball game. Cameron Stoltz is in pump formation for the Trojans. Butler sends one man back. It's Austin Flory, and he did get a decent return on the most recent kickoff. Yeah, they got a guy lined up outside this time. They're making sure they don't fake it. Stoltz is punt. It's a low line drive, and it will take oh, a pro Troy bounce inside the 20 oh. and eventually down around the 17 yard line. I said, make him go 80 yards. They said, no, how about 92? 91 yards to tie this ball game. Inside the 10. Well, Troy did get their second touchdown on a 93-yard drive, and Butler is facing the exact same situation with 2.20 to go and, and no, no timeouts. timeouts. And no timeouts. Well, they throw that ball up. Is there a flag on the, on the play? I, I see laundry see on the field at about the 36-yard line. Looking for the white hat, the referee. Okay. Todd Bowerman. Here's the call. Eventually. Eventually. They're still talking about it. Don't want me to make the call for him? <laughs> I'm not going to speculate. In my mind, I'm thinking he might make them repunt it. I didn't see anything during or after the play. Was it a very late flag? Holding. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> so the punt will stand and Butler will keep possession, but now their task got just that much tougher. They're going 91. They said, how about 94 or 5? And the ball will be placed at the Aviator 5-yard line. Well, Troy's second touchdown earlier in the fourth quarter came on a 93-yard drive. Now Butler... Needs to match that to extend the game. Or well, give themselves a chance of even winning the game. Do you, this is the time to be a hero of the game. You know, you're uh, for Troy, be a hero and get a turnover and, you know, get off the field. And if you're a hero for Vandalia, hey, we had a 95-yard drive. Jordan Seibert's pass just beyond the reach of his intended receiver. That was number 18, Corey Rice. And that only took four seconds off the clock, but again, 2.16 to go, and the Aviators are out of timeouts, and they need to go 95 yards in those 136 seconds. I mean, uh, Troy's done a great job of defense of getting penetration, but I think right now they're less concerned about sacking the quarterback. They're more so concerned about keeping everything in front of no big play defense. They bring a little pressure here. Cyber quickly finds himself in trouble, trying to get out of the end zone, which he does, and nearly lost his balance, but did get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one or two yards, but it set the Butler offense in third and very long. Did he get out of bounds? I don't know if he stepped out of bounds. It's hard to tell. The clock isn't running, so maybe he did step maybe out. Maybe he did get out of bounds. Either way, it's going to be third and long. And they're not giving him any gain on the play. It's yeah, going to stay third and ten. He must have stepped out of bounds before he turned up field. He was about five yards deep in the end zone before being chased out of the pocket by the Troy defense. That's another thing to keep in mind here, the possibility of a safety. The safety means a sack. And Cyber quickly loses his footing, and he does go down for a Troy safety. 2.02 to go. Two points and the ball for the Trojans. We have a late flag and probably unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. It won't have any bearing on whether or not uh, Troy will have the football or have it. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let me wait and see what the referee calls. 
Well, from a Trojan standpoint, it was a matter of they were able to force Cyber to scramble on second down. He was able to evade that pressure just in time. But if you don't succeed one time, try again. And that time it worked. They said, we're not going to sit back and let you just pick us apart. You know, we will play like we've been playing all night, being aggressive, and they got aggressive at the right time. Especially not after that 4th and 15 conversion on the previous drive. They won't give another opportunity. Oh, a holding on holding. Troy. Oh, that, was a, that means it's still Vandalia ball. So this. Butler with the critical break, potentially. Here's Top Bowerman. So the foul occurred after the play. The safety had already been recorded with just over two minutes to play. The penalty, as you heard, Tom Bowerman, it will be assessed on the upcoming free kick. He did an excellent job of explaining that, but look at his pressure. Oh. Devin Strobel, the co-captain, the man we spoke with, and you may have seen him on Dayton 24-7 now last night previewing the game. He talked about the toughness and how this team has come together. A lot of players that have been teammates for many years. And that's coming together. And now Troy is out to a 2-0 start. And officially, they're 2 minutes, 2 seconds for moving to 3-0. They're not always pretty, and you know. Uh, but I've never seen an ugly win. <laughs> no one's ever going to complain no about an ugly win. win. I mean, when you hear Coach said it was an ugly win. How ugly was it really, Coach? We won the game. You know, it, it was I know a we win. can do better, but <laughs> it's a win. You know, all losses are ugly. It's not a beautiful loss. They all hurt. There is you no can learn such, from both situations, though. There is no such concept as a moral victory. No. No. Yeah, like what Bill Parcells used to tell us, you are what your record says you are. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> that's what you are. You know, we can't act like you're better than them. You are what you're ready to say you are. Go out there and prove it. You want to be winners? Go win. So 16-7, we have a free kick coming up. For those of you that don't necessarily watch football all that often, what happens is the kickoff after a safety, it's not a kickoff like you usually see where they tee it up. It's more of a extended punt. punt. You're right. So that's what's going to happen with Mason Ruckner standing at his own 35-yard line. He, it, he's essentially going to punt the ball, or he'll try or, it or onside, onside <laughs> with 2.02 left. If I'm that front line, I let the ball go by me. And here's the kick. Uh -oh. It's taken by a Troy player and quickly brought down at the 40-yard line with exactly two minutes to go. Man on the spot for the Trojans was number 20, Marcus Cavanaugh. He recovered the onside kick a few minutes ago. Or excuse me, that was Aiden Gorman on the recovery. He had the touchdown. So first down for the Trojans at the Butler 40-yard line with exactly two minutes to go. And Butler does not have any timeouts. They used all the timeouts on the one drive that led to Troy punting. But the punt was able to pin Butler deep in their own territory. And that drive, of course, you may have seen just now resulting in the safety recorded by Devin Strobel. So Troy officially two minutes away from moving to three and zero. As we mentioned, they will stay home. I think Troy let the ball out of the air. I mean, take, let the ball out of the clock. They want to take the air out of the, out of the game. Yep. Just, just just grind it all out. You know, uh, Vandalia have no more timeouts. So, you know, the best formation in football will be coming there pretty soon, and that's the victory formation. Well, Kirkpatrick first. He's going to hand off to Jahari Ward, who broke one tackle quickly. Got close to another first down pickup. He'll be marked down just shy of the line to gain to the 31-yard line. So it's going to bring up second and short. But now, the other thing is also making sure everyone's on the same page from a Troy perspective. You don't necessarily need to snap the clock as soon as possible. You want to wait no, until that play it. clock is in single digits. There's a victory formation. Somebody they're getting it lined up. That's the best play in the playbook. <laughs> So Troy, officially less than 90 seconds away from moving to 3-0 and winning their home opener. They will stay at Troy Memorial next next Friday when they host the West Carrollton Pirates. West Carrollton have it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. whoa. 
got a little, a little, uh, a little discomfort up here in the press box. It's kind of tight. Trip and fail. I think everybody's okay up here. Thankfully. So the knee taken. You know, victory formation reminds me uh, when I played for the Philadelphia Eagles, we lined up in a victory formation against one of our rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. And we took a knee twice, and then on the third time, instead of taking a knee to end the game, we threw a bomb. <laughs> well, <laughs> Passing the fence to the one yard line, I scored a touchdown. Kirkpatrick takes the knee, and that is going to be that. The Troy Trojans move to 3 and 0, winning their home opener, and they move to 2 and 0 in the always competitive MBL. As Troy Everhart goes across the field to greet Zach Geith, who is now one and two as a head coach. But the Aviators will have a chance to get back to 500 next week when they host the Greenville Green Way. A well played game. Nobody has a chance. Nobody, I mean, nobody from Vendaya need to hang their head. They played well tonight. Troy played hard. Best thing about going 2 0, you got a chance to go 3 0. So they made it. They're 3 0 with an opportunity to go 4-0 next week. So Troy will be collecting the Champions Trophy in just a few minutes, and we'll have that for you right on my TV, Dayton. And we'll take a quick break. Troy 3-0 after a 16-7 win over the Butler Aviators. Trophy presentation after the break. A hard-fought contest in the Miami Valley League, but the Troy Trojans move to 3-0 thanks to a 16-7 win against the Butler Aviators. And right now, the winning Trojans are at midfield, ready to celebrate, and we'll send it down to Tej Joshi. Tej? Of course, a hard-fought game, everybody. Congratulations on a wonderful win. We're just going to present you guys the trophy, the Lee's Thursday Night Lights Champions Trophy. Here you guys go. Thank you, Tage. So you see the Trojans winning their home opener after convincing wins on the road at Dunbar and Greenville. They came back for their first home game of the season. It wasn't a 50-point performance from the offense, but they wanted to get the job done, and they did get the job done. And here we have the drive of the game coming up. It is presented by Carol Wirtz Tire Company. This was the opening drive of the second half. Troy won the toss. They deferred, so they got the ball first to start the second half. And a couple of timely passes from Andy Kirkpatrick. This completion to Logan Ullery. And the drive ultimately ending with a one-yard touchdown run from Dakota Manson. Jahari Ward will hear that day coming up in just a few seconds, but he was able to get timely plays when it was needed. And this was the touchdown run. Or excuse me, not the touchdown run, just another run for more positive yards on the part of Nansen. Here's the touchdown run. There it Trace is. the plane for the opening touchdown of the game after it was scoreless at halftime. So Dakota Manson capping off the drive of the game with the Trojans' first touchdown as the Trojans about to celebrate with the student section and the band, the singing of their alma mater. Next up, we have our play of the game, also presented by Carol Works Tire Company. This was in the fourth quarter after Troy was pinned back at their own seven-yard line. A 93-yard drive capped off by this 44-yard touchdown pass from Aiden Kirkpatrick to Aiden Gorman. He was wide open at the point of contact with the catch, and he was able to evade the new and maneuver past the He looked extremely defense. well on that, I tell you. Everybody was in third gear, and he was in fifth. Yep. He got that ball in his arm and found another gear. So Ada Gorman, the receiver on the play of the game, presented by Carol Wirtz Tire Company. Our player of the game, also presented by Carol Wirtz Tire Company. He did not have a touchdown, but he was important from start to finish throughout the entire game. Troy senior running back Jahari Ward. Again, he did not find the end zone, but he got the gains that were needed. They, a lot of the time, they set up first downs, and they were instrumental in setting up the two touchdowns. Absolutely. Timely first down running, you know, getting them, keeping them in first, second, and short, and then he showed his hands. You know, he got a big play in the passing game. You know, I don't know if we had a stat there, but he was a workhorse all night long, and it helped set up everywhere. Here's a big play right in the, in the passing game. Caught it, made play guys missing. That was a third down catch. It resulted in a crucial first down there, you know, in the fourth quarter. Ward finishing with 75 rushing yards on the night as the Trojans move to 3-0. Like you said, Keith, 
chance for now you're at 3-0, a chance to move to 4-0 as you take a look at the game summary stats. Troy with the time of possession, they were able to control the game at the line of scrimmage. Butler did have chances, especially late in the game. And Troy able to overcome those two turnovers, one on an interception, one on a turnover on downs. A couple of penalties that both teams will want to work on before resuming MBL play next week. The final thoughts, Keith Byers. Troy with a chance now to go to 4-0 next week. I mean, both teams still, you know, got a chance to, you know, play off contentions since so early in the season. You know, Butler did an excellent job having that big goose egg as far as turnovers can. That's what kept them in the game so long. You know, and, uh, I mean, Troy, I mean, I think the, the future is very bright for this program. You know, still early in the season, they got some things, some coaching points. The most important thing, they got the third win of the season, get you to 3-0. and But they got to, you know, do a lot better offensively in converting third downs and, you know, taking, you know, getting those turnovers, you know, uh, taken care of. If another team can have zero turnovers, so can you. And when you don't turn the ball over, you have a much better chance to win the game, and it won't be so it's a hard fault as tonight was. Again, Troy will be back home next week when they take on the West Carrollton Pirates. Butler returns to Vandalia next week and a chance to get back to 500 when they host the Greenville Green Wave. Meanwhile, we will be in Xenia next week as the Troutwood Madison Rams take on the Alter Knights. That was a great game last year. We're hoping for another great game like we saw tonight and like we saw between the Rams and Knights last year. Now will wrap it up for week three of Thursday Night Lights from Troy Memorial Stadium. For Keith Byers, T's Joshi, and our crew, I'm Matt Digby. Thank you for watching this presentation of Dayton 24-7 Now and Classic Productions. Tonight's final score, Troy 16, Butler 7. Good night from Troy.